This is the Levels Network. I'm Justin Hordor, joined by the Triple OG, Widamu Mason. Widamu, it is round two review time, mate. Yeah, nice. Uh, how was your weekend, mate? You enjoy the footy? Love the footy. Um, it was pretty cruisy. I watched a lot of footy, watched every single game. Obviously, I did the stuff with the Bulldogs out at Chester Hill, Terry, La- Terry Lamb Territory. Watched the SG Ball, the Jersey Flag. The great Willie Tonga come down for the weekend, which was good. Big pimping. Got after it a couple of times, trained, me, him and Ren. Just watched a heap of football, man. We get uh, often complimented about how good we're looking, we're training, we're staying fit. Jeez, Willie Tonga's looking that fit. That human is ridiculous. We play um, played a game of touch down at um, Maruba Beach every Saturday at 6.30, just yep. with a lot of the young kids and some locals. Oh, Sutter, so that's Sutter what, and all those kind of guys. When Ren takes that picture on the on Yeah, the, uh, so thing. that's after the 6.30, uh, 6.30 start. Anyone can join in, right? Oh, Nice. Um, anyway, so Tong takes his shirt off. He's 40 years old, Willie Tonga. He looks better than ever. He looks better than uh, 2004, Willie Tonga. Yeah, he's just – but he's so focused. He's yeah. so focused. He's diet. He doesn't drink. He's um, He just gets after it every day. I saw what he does, like his gym session. You showed you his program? Dude, get away. I trained mm. with him a couple of times. Like he's, he's on another level. That's why, that's why he looks like that. Hard I, work. I ran into uh, Jimmy Dimmick uh, when I was doing my run, swim down at Clay Valley, and mm. uh, he had a bit of a laugh. We had a chat. He's like, he goes, you look fitter now than when you did playing. I was like, it's different when you don't have to make those tackles and do those <laughs> wrestling sessions. You actually enjoy your training again. Yeah, you? you train and for And you train reason. like – Normie does it with me as well. Me mm. and Normie go down and he started to tweak his calf the other day and I said, just stop. Yeah. We, we, don't have to, we don't have to push our bodies to the limit no. anymore. Just remember, you can still run and train tomorrow and do something different. Mm. Whereas if you're a trainer and you've got a little uh, tweak in your cuff, if you walk off and it's not serious, yeah. they're going to fucking wrestle you. So just stop. <laughs> don't listen, do it. Listen to your body. Listen Anyone to your who's- body. 40 plus or 35 plus and just retired. So, yeah, Tong, was good to see Tong. Just get, that, get, him, get, get him out of Brisbane, get him down here. It's a different energy down there. Uh, Brisbane, um, you know, he's, he has his crew up there is a bit different. You know, he's got um, you know, you, close you, mates with Rennie and uh, yeah, you myself boys, and Sonny Bill. And you got a bond from down. your time that yeah. is uh, un- like you can it's tell. It's unbreakable. The, uh, I find that guys that have won premierships together, like yeah. I, I could see it at Manly when I arrived. Like I'm close with boys from Manly, like really close, yeah. like good mates. But the boys that uh, won comps together, it's a mm. different bond. Yeah, it is different. It's a different celebration and different bond that you, you guys yeah. have that just you, you won't get unless you win a premiership, I don't reckon. It's good to see him. He's still not into um, watching as much footy as I am. <laughs> <laughs> talking footy, <laughs> he doesn't. He loves talking footy. He's always he's always about it. He's got a lot of got a lot of a lot of knowledge to give, mm. you know. But he's always out doing stuff with deadly choices and just giving back to the community, man. He just does a lot. He does such good things for those guys, and he gets a lot of gratitude out of it. So yeah, he does. I see the coaching clinics, the individual coaching clinics yeah. he's been doing. He's really going to get into that because some, some really good information that he gives in the clips that I've seen. Yes. You know, and he and he, he loves the game. You know, he just he's just not that sort of guy that's going to sit there and watch a fucking whole Super Sad Day like I am. Well, you know who else watched him? <laughs> I did, mate. Exactly. So let's go through our round two bets friends recap. Nice. Uh, it was a rough week for me picking the lines, which yeah. I pride myself on. I, I the reason I like to go to try scorers with the lines, Mace, is because I back myself to pick at least four to five per week. Try to get in the in the plus, mm. and then if I hit a few try scorers, it's a bonus. But it was the opposite. The uh, the try score has come through for me yeah. this week. So um, to kick off uh, Thursday night, Broncos minus eight and a half. I got that. Look comfortable. Trail scores right at the end. If you had thirteen plus, you'd be yeah. You would have been filthy with the trail mitt try right at the death. Uh, Stags no good. Um, he was causing drama. He should have scored actually. Remember yeah. the dummy inside to, to if he dummied inside to Ezra Mam. Go yourself. Um, Sharks minus ten and a half. Uh, felt like I didn't deserve that one because the Bulldogs were so much better. But the Sharks showed some class to kick on. Nico Hines, uh, he, he – he. So you backed him 13 plus too, didn't you? I did for my best friend's For your multi, best friend, yeah. But I need Nico Hines to score. Oh, okay. And Nico set everything up, but he didn't score himself. Um, Eels plus seven and a half. I missed out by half a point, mm. eight points. They look really good if they don't lose Bailey Simons, and I think they get home on that yeah. one as well. Sean Lane, five dollars. You said he wasn't going to punch through Cleary and Martin. Exactly what he did. <laughs> exactly what he did. What a great line. Well done, Sean Lane. Because yeah. the only reason he might be able to beat Cleary on an out ball, but coming out and then in, and then he had to get through the dog of dogs. Liam Martin. He got through him. Liam Martin. Just missed his missed his assignment a little bit. It's funny in the preview you. 
basic because I was going to say he was going to run it in outline to score mm. a try, and then once he said he ain't running through Cleary and Martin, I was like, fuck, that's right. He's got exactly what he did. He's got Cleary and Martin, and then I went. So I started looking for a kick try, which, by the way. He should have had it maybe yeah. another two through kicks. Nathan, he was just about to jump. Nathan Cleary gave him a little check and then there was another one where it was like sort of floating around mm. on the ground. Um, the next game, first game of Saturday was the Tigers versus the Raiders. Completely got that one wrong. Yeah. Thought it was going to be a tricky game. Tigers plus seven and a half. Uh, I know they fought back to get to a good, uh, a good part of the game, but they never really looked likely. Uh, Dream Bullard. Some flashes. He'll score some tries, yeah. but wasn't to He's be good. into this game. Cowboys minus seven and a half. Valentine's Holmes two dollars sixty. I completely jinx Val. He had an awful game. Uh, we'll talk about that more <laughs> with like not only tries, kicks, drop kicks, balls. Yeah. He'll never ever do that again. Nah. Uh, Cowboys minus seven and a half. I really think they should have beaten them by the Knights by this much, but. They just got so many errors, which we'll talk about. Uh, Storm minus six and a half and Katoa 350, no good. So struggling through the Super Saturdays to begin with to start the year, but I, I come good with the team that I know better than any. Manly plus one and a half, Jam dollar ninety five, Tolu Cola anytime, three dollars seventy five. Sharp that kid. He looks good. Mace. Let's talk about Cola. Remind me about Cola when we get to the Manly yeah. breakdown because uh, we talked about a few origin smokies. I'm telling you, there's a, I feel like there's a vacant wing spot. That's his first run. <laughs> it just went 60 down. The, Tommy Talao was nowhere near him. It's t- t- Even though Dom Young probably would have chased him down, I didn't realise Dom Young was the winger. Yeah. But it's if, tough he was, to keep if, up he was, if he was flat and fast with him. The juice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard. Another awful read. Dragons minus one and a half and Ben Hunt anytime 374. What, another bad read. That was our worst read of the week. Easily. What are you doing, St. George? We've got to be better. And we'll talk about that when we break down the game. So the total outlay for the first two weeks is $320. My kitty is currently at $362. So I still have a profit of $42, which was around $55 last (laughs) week. So I took a bit of a hit. But as always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season. So please keep in front of mind what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confident confidential support call 1-800-858-858 Mace let's get on to the show and this Mm. is the part of the show where we if if anyone's new to the gang or if you're an L1 from day one like Cade Walsh from the P's and D's page welcome and hit that subscribe or follow on whatever platform you are using Uh, YouTube 22k bang that's done 31k on Insta bang 55 TikTok and subscribe on Apple and Spotify and leave us a podcast review felt like my energy had to be a little bit better this week because Cade I love it I love all the subscriptions I love all the support so let's keep it going with the support from Body Science the BSC energy drinks that fuel all the dogs in the competition because it covers everything. Mm. They're, they're across the league. Um, they get you pumped up. They get me pumped up for a session. Mace, we've got two cans here. You already pumped one on the way here. Two. You, I had one just before I got in the car. Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, we, we not only talk about them and we, and we feel like the dogs – of the NRL use them. We mm. also use them ourselves. So let's get into it, mate. Your BSC dog of the week is... My dog of the week is Mr. Paseca. Mount Paseca. Mount Paseca. He was about it yesterday, man. I was looking through some games. I was like, who was... Because I always judge it on who you're playing. Yes. What pack are you going against? I like that. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, he went against one of those one of the best packs in the game. Lindsay Collins, Australian rep. Hargraves... New Zealand rep, one of the old dogs. Do you know what I mean? Victor Radley. Victor Cheese, Radley. All Cheese, nationals. They all hit. They're all they nationals. They all hit good. He's six foot six and 120 kilos. Probably 12% body fat. Runs quick. Good minutes. Everything like that. He's fit. He's got good mobility, He's eh? He's very mobile, man. Mm. He's just, if he reaches his potential, he'll end up with a blues jersey and a green and gold jersey. Mm. And I think they've been waiting for him to arrive. Last year, had a little bit of a hiccup with, his, uh, with an injury. I think it happened around about round six. But yesterday... Just off the top of the head, just meet my eyeball test. I don't give a shit about his stats. I said he's the best forward on the ground. Well, let me run through the stats because I, when you text me, yeah, and when said, I text you, you didn't I was really like, know. Grouse, because I was at the game live. Josh Alloway takes the first hit. Alloway set the tone. He set the tone with the first carry, and then Paseca carried about three defenders, about twenty meters. So eighteen carries for one hundred and ninety-five yeah. meters, 
95 post-contact metres. And he would have got 15 to 20 of those on the first carry, yeah. like you said, and set the tone. And when I was previewing this game, and me and you were the same, the thing that I worried about with the Roosters was felt like they had an advantage on the pack. Yeah. In, our, in our forward pack. Yeah, we've got Ola Kawatu and Jakey, but up front in the middles, I if felt they, like their middles. If those two up in the middle can just do like that, do that every single game, mm. you got a team. Because their back line's red hot, their back row is their back row's superstars. But he had like I think it was like 28 tackles, what, maybe two misses. Yep. Um, I think 60 something minutes, 60 something minutes in the middle against a team like that who just doesn't stop. That's and probably just, his biggest improvement is the Yeah, minute, the minutes, minutes, mate. If you yeah. can get 60-plus minutes in the middle, you will dominate the game. He'll end up with numbers like this. This should be this should be his bottom floor, yeah. right? He can just go up and up and up. And going, going against a pack like that and dominating him should give him the world of confidence. If yeah. he can stay fit, if he can stay like this, Manly's going to be up there, man. They're, yeah. they're, they're my team at the moment. Yeah, I like We'll it. go through it later, but okay. like after two games, I'm like, that's the most complete team in the comp. All right, so in a, in, a, in a couple of minutes, we, we've got a YouTube question and uh, we're going to talk about the Latrell situation mm -hmm. and then we're going to go through the form line. I want to look at the form line of the first two games, yeah. which might help us preview. We we'll get a little bit of a gauge on it. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll mm. get a better understanding of like who's doing what. Um, I love that one, mate, and, and I agree if uh, – Because my now, other one, sorry, was Carrigan is a – you know, he, he was close, but then I'm like – you know, it was a scrappy South, game. It was very scrappy and yeah. he played a lot of minutes. He played 76 minutes and I expect that from Carrigan. A lot of touches. It was a tough game. It was hot, sweaty. But, um, you know, like you, that, Souths don't have players like uh, the Roosters. I believe this was a better quality game. Better quality game, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I thought um, – But Carrigan was – he was a dog. Oh, he was up there. 200, Carrigan's – 222 metres. Carrigan's always going to be up there. 30-something the tackles, mate. He's, he's an animal. We just got to figure out someone else not to pick some most of the guys. Yeah. Every week we could pick probably Carrigan, Joseph Tarpany. Yeah. Uh, you know, all these – as I said, I go against – the pack that you're going against, yep. you know, if he does, if he, if he did that against the Tigers or some lesser lesser team, Titans, like I'd expect that from him. Yep. But the Roosters, that's all right. My BSC dog of the week, and I'm going to go a little bit different. I'm going to go in the outside backs. I'm going to go the Hammer, Hammer So <laughs> Tabu White Fido. Uh, these stats are Freak. these stats are impressive, Mace. But there's two stats, only two individual stats that matter the most to me. 16 carries for 209 metres. Mind you, he picked up about 70 of the best of those on that kick return straight off the bat when Bostock catches it yeah, on Lomax. And he he never really gets out of second gear and cruises all the way. 6 nil to the Dolphins and they, they never look back. Four tackle breaks and three tries. Two more he added to that. But what made him the dog of the week for me is uh, early on in the game, just before halftime, Tyrell Sloan uh makes a break off a beautiful, nice little offload yeah. and maybe kicked it a little bit too early. But Tyrell Sloan was pretty flying. much flying. Flying. He was in fourth gear. He chips it over the top, lands in a nice spot. But Hammers turn and retreat and like his off the mark speed. Is he the quickest in the is he the quickest in the comp? He'd be for me if over 70 I'm, or 80. I'm just trying to think. So Sabi, Sabi would obviously be up there. Dom Young. Uh, Dom Young would be up there over 100, but over 20 or 40, fuck, give me, give me hammer. Just say 60. I reckon 60. I don't okay. think anyone's touching him over 60. Okay. Yeah, it'd be just, close. Yeah. So I reckon Sabi would pick him up in the end and yeah, maybe but Dom 60 Young. 60 is the – Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, and then the – this is a part that I know you will love. This is what epitomizes a dog. Mm. They're up 38 nil Again, Tyrell Sloan, 30 seconds to go. He's going for a try in the sideline and fucking Hammer picks him up, drags him over the sideline and protects that lead and protects this a duck egg. Right. And how much – you know what it's like, oh. Mace. When you go into a video and you're doing review – and you've got a big fucking. That's what's going to be reviewed. You're going to be. You're going to see a beautiful, nice duck egg on the scoreline. No tries, and it do, it doesn't put a dampener on a really good afternoon performance. It's nothing better. But in they rugby won't. League. But they won't be showing his his tries. They'll It'll be, be showing the stoppage on Sloan and yep. and then ragdolling him out. Yep. That's what they'll show. That's what Wayne will show. And they said just their hunt in defense. You know, none of the tries. A couple of tries at the end just to make you feel good before he gets out there and just gives it to you. Yeah, yeah. But, I like he, yeah, I, li I like that pick. I like it. All right, mate, let's get on the YouTube questions. Uh, we've got one here from Henry Roebuck, and I like this question. It's pretty detailed. but Jeez, I, I, that's I, a long question. Yeah, but I'm going to break it down to you a little bit. So he, I'll, I'll get about halfway through, and then you'll get the gist of it. Hey, Scope, have more of a comment than a question, but would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, with the news of Lukey's injury, the chat about – and that's not Lukey Stowe. That's Highland Lukey. Yeah, Highland. Um, <laughs> 
there is chat about him being injury prone has reignited and no doubt journos are going to start calling into question the long-term deal he's reportedly about to sign despite his horror run of injuries i'd argue that that label is misplaced he did an acl uh he then had a hamstring strain which again it's quite common when you when uh someone does an acl uh the next injury was a facial fracture and his point is he would argue it's more bad luck than being injury prone. So his example is Tommy Travojevic, very similar. Tommy, you know, obviously had some lower body injuries, but he's also done his pec. He uh, he did his shoulder in the Parramatta game. So uh, is it fair to label players injury prone, you know, specifically, uh, you know, Hylam Luki now who's so young and, and obviously what Tommy Turbo has gone through when – the injuries just seem to be so different. Like, is it easier to yeah. – what would be the easier thing for – here's my question on this, Mace. Would you prefer understanding or, or potentially having a problem that's centred around doing your knee and then knowing how to rehab it and get better at it or would it be more frustrating where you go, you do your knee one preseason, next one you do your pec, next one you do your shoulder. Look at Tommy Gilbert. Tommy shoulder Gil- reconstruction, then ACL. Yes. Two major injuries. Mm. You know, you can't help those. Two totally different movements. It's not connected. Nothing's connected like that. When you do your hamstrings and you do like just say your lower back and you do your knee, lower leg injuries, you know what I mean? That's that's different, right? Mm. If you keep doing your knee two or three times, you know, like what some young kids have, then you're probably gonna nearly gonna get an early retirement. Yeah. Then an ankle injury. But like Hyam Luke has been highly unli- unlucky. You know what I mean? Like ACL, the facial fracture. You know, now there's probably a syndesmosis in his foot. Mm. Um, it's funny how some guys it just, just sucks, get the man. Game. Like some 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 players, Luke O'Donnell at the start of his career, mm. he couldn't get it started till two thousand five. Can you think of yeah? So he, he debuted in ninety nine. He well. was injury. He had injury after injury after injury. Shoulders were just letting him down. His knees it was just all over the shop. Like Highland Lukey. Mm. Then he got it together. Then he put probably one of the most damaging back rolls in the comp. Yeah, for that's a good a great five, example. five or six years. You know, like it happened. Sonny Bill at the start of his career, shoulder injuries, quad injuries. Um, a, knee inj- a knee injury Like he had that Before he even debuted At 18, 19 18 so, years old So he got there and Just like, quickly Just quickly yeah. on this Before we move off it All three of those guys Tom Gilbert Hylam Lukey uh, Sonny Bill Williams uh, who, Did you have another example there? Luke O'Donnell Luke O'Donnell Yeah They all were In the forwards Young and would have debuted early And they, hadn't yeah. properly Grown into their bodies Yeah exactly right? So the, the analogy is right Like where you get it from physios and doctors, like just say if you if you want to if you want big branches like big arms and legs and shit like your just say as a, as a tree right it's usually now as your trunk trunk is your core if your core isn't strong your trunk isn't strong and you have got these big fucking branches mm. and it's not strong they're gonna break right things are gonna go you, you you're gonna have a shoulder reconstruction your knees are gonna go all that kind of stuff so if your core and everything is so strong and your stability is strong everything else gets strong. So all Sonny did was work on his core nonstop, still still to this day, and he had no injuries after that. I mean, he did, he did have a, obviously a shitload of injuries after yeah. it, but nothing as major as he did before. Yeah, and also and, uh, was that similar with Minnie as well? Minnie Min Chello, Chello, yeah. All the, yeah he had Didn't he have back, really bad back problems? Back injuries, injuries but he was core? a gymnast when he was younger, right? Yeah. That was because of that. He had okay. a real curve in his back. People didn't, know, people didn't know that. When he was from fucking three years old to 12 or 13, he was doing gymnastics. Yeah. You know, so that his, his lower back went on him and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's just weird. Don't add, don't don't put that mocker on him already. It is early. And yeah, uh, I'll tile him. I'm he'd be twenty one. Yeah, man. Let him develop. 21. Let him develop. He's still a baby. And as a as a cowboy, if you're a cowboys fan, you're not worried about the contract at all. The contract you worry about is trying to sort his one out, which is uh, apparently is done, and trying to keep Kuli Kefu Fine Fuyaki yeah. as well because mm. <sighs> Man, they've got a good rotation. When it's young kids like that with injuries like that, take care of his mental well-being. Mm. That's what you got to do. He's a young kid from Cairns, right? He's down in Townsville. Like he's been there for a couple of years now. Get a good support system around him because yeah. he would not be feeling that good today. We, um, you know, we, like because he's he's got to go through a whole year, maybe about six to eight weeks. We don't know how long it's going to be with his foot. I mean, it could be a year, could be six weeks, could be a couple of weeks. I think it's syndesmosis. Syndesmosis, but depends on how bad it is, yeah, right? Yeah. He's in a boot. They put you in a boot. If you roll your ankle, you're in a boot. Mm, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you know, obviously, if you if he could have went on, he would have went on. Um, Lukey, can you look up NRL physio and see if he's got an update on Hylam Lukey for us as we go? Yeah, on, so mate? we just need to be patient with him, get him back, but be careful. Of putting these fucking narratives out there about him being injury prone because that'll get into his head if he's reading all this shit. If I'm Luke, he's a big fan of the show, obviously. Just don't fucking read papers. Yeah. Don't nah. read papers and don't read articles about this because 
You're not injury prone. Your body's still growing. Let yourself develop. Get back and fucking kill it. We've uh, you through our partnership with the tab. They're obviously um, partners with uh, the Cowboys as well. Yeah. And, and we've done. I've done a couple of appearances for them. We did one where we went out to the. Uh, I went and seen him out at Manly, and we did some NFL chat. And then we did remember we did the yeah. golf up there. Good guys, Andy, man. Lukey's might have an update here. Yeah, only the post that he did on Saturday. Uh, and what does that say on the post on Saturday? Suggests a medial high ankle sprain given the video footage. Yep. He said, um, these are normally four to eight. Yeah, so the Wanted suggestion is it's a, a, a mid-high ankle sprain, uh, roughly four to eight weeks, yeah. no updated. And that again, that's NRL physio who also says that he is not the physio of the teams. He just gives his – And let's uh, go – He's let's, pretty got a, normally yeah, got a pretty good read Let's not on get it twisted, right? This, this sport is brutal. Yes. Injuries come with this game. Yeah. And when you do sign that NRL contract, if you want to be an NRL player, you understand this is going to happen. Also, one last thing on all those players, they don't – yeah, every every player plays the game tough, but Highland Lukey, Luke O'Donnell, Tom Gilbert, and uh, and Sonny Bill Williams, they don't just run at you. They try to run through you. Yeah. So when you the try to run drive. through someone mm. and you get caught in those positions where you've got yeah. people hanging off you, they're hanging around you, or in Tom Gilbert's uh, uh, position where he tries to hurt you, mm. he throws his he he has no he has reckless abandon for his own yeah. rig. Uh, and the last little thing that I was going to say on Highland Luki is he seems like a really good kid. Great he, kid. He seems like he's got a really level head. Mm. Um, so I think he'll be sweet, mate. Yeah. And he's got a really good support team around him up there in the Cowboys. I like what the Cowboys are doing. You're high on the Manly Seagulls. Yeah. I'm high on the Cowboys. And I, I, I'm stoked because I had him in the top four at the start of the year and they're producing. Um, all right, mate. Let's get on to um, the Trail Mitt post-match interview. So uh, this is the updated – uh, I, I suppose news we got from uh, the interview on Thursday night. Latrell Mitchell will not be sanctioned by the NRL after the X-rated radio interview following South Sydney's loss to Brisbane on Thursday night. Mitchell dropped the F-bomb five times while speaking to Triple M at one stage, admitting, I don't care if I'm swearing, boys. However, the fullback will not be issued with a breach notice for the outburst. Souths also want to puni- won't punish Mitchell for the interview, which has been viewed over 160,000 times on the Instagram page. Probably their highest views. <laughs> it would be. It would be. So let's break it down, mate. Like, how do you? I'll start. I'll, you know, everyone knows I'm a big supporter of, uh, and I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because we swear on this podcast all the time. I shouldn't even comment on this. All right, Bulldog but, Richie might cry. Well, Bulldog Richie's not happy with the swearing. <laughs> so Bulldog Richie uh, replied, and he. So we'll get into this. So Bulldog Rich Richie. Surely he's taking a piss. You are uh, in, entitled to your opinion. Yeah. But he doesn't like the swearing. <laughs> he doesn't like the swearing. Now, love you, without up. without being, uh, how do we how do we uh, put this? Let's get back to the Latrell situation. Yeah. I'm a big supporter of Latrell, and I understand the passion. The initial couple of swear words, it's like, all right, sweet, you are passionate. You've just lost the game. Um, you're probably frustrated. You're zero and two. He saved three tries. He scores a nice one at the end. Gets cramp as well. Him and Reese Walsh hug it double, out. Double cramp. Double cramp. Double hug. <laughs> double hug. Double, double unhooks. <laughs> <laughs> but Trell, I love you, bro. But like, this is one where you've got to go. All right, you slipped up the first couple of times, but don't just keep doubling down and doubling down, and then don't say, "I don't give a fuck." <laughs> As well at the end, not on like there are certain platforms. You come on here, you come on levels. We're doing it, we do an interview, swear as much as you want. Yeah. I could care fucking less, especially if you're doing a podcast. There's just a bit of a different, like it's like when you go to the movies, you send your kid to the movies. Mm. If you if you probably listen to a radio station or Channel Nine or or, or Fox or whatever, you, you you want your kids watching it because you know you're sending them to a PG mo- yeah. PG thirteen movie. Whereas if you're listening to the Levels Network, there's a warning. It's a warning. Fifteen plus mature audiences, and this is where and this is where it, it, it not affected me, but it made me reconsider or at least filter myself ever ever so slightly. And I don't want to get away from the raw feelings that I get when I swear because I feel like when I swear, it's also something that I'm passionate about, and I want to put uh, you know I'm swearing because I want to put an exclamation mark on it, yeah. right? So if I say – Randy Matua gets on me about saying the C word. I'm not going to say it, Randy, yeah. okay? But when I say he is a good C mm. or a – because I'm not going to force it now, but if he is a shit C, I want to enforce that I genuinely think yeah. those things about that person. Now, 
Um, back to the swearing. Uh, last year, you know, I've told you about this, but I've told Lukey. Started doing some work with SEN. Joel Kane comes up to me and he, our first time calling, and he goes, mate, young fella, loves your show. I was like, oh, awesome. Thinking he's like 15, 16. I think he's, he's 13. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, all right, I'm going to pull it. Like this is – I understand – we do this show. We like to keep it raw and authentic. That's why, um, you know, we try to give a different perspective on what other people do. But you've also got to be slightly aware of it. And I specifically don't try to double down and do it as much as I can. If it slips out, it slips out. Yeah. But I'm definitely not going to force it. And I think that's where Latrell, obviously in this case, I'm like, I'm always been a fan of you, bro, but you should have pulled this one back. Mm. I agree. But I'm, I'm like that as well. Like when I get really passionate about something, I just swear. And it's something that I've been very aware of as well. I'm just yeah. trying to like not swear as much, but like because it's a show and it's because we, we can swear on this because there is a warning before you watch Levels, there is going to be explicit language. Mm. There's not explicit la- explicit language coming up on Channel 9 at 10 o'clock, right? Every now and again it slips out. Yeah. But, but like with, with, with Latrell, I think he's just got to that level where he's copped so much shit off the field and he's just got to that level. He goes, I'm going to say what I want. They're going to have a crack at me anyway. I'm going to swear. I'm going to do whatever I want. Because he was very well aware of what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, I've done a thousand interviews after a game. I've slipped up a couple of times went, oh, yeah. If, oh, and then I'll just – I'll pull back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you understand it's live. Everybody's listening. Do you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. And, like, he did – as I said, like, his, his care factor is zero. <laughs> and I could see that. I was just like – when I watched I was like – he, oh yeah, he, he's just letting it go. Mm. Whatever, because I think he's just gotten to that level where you want to talk to me, I'm going to be me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, or just don't talk to me, Triple yeah. M. Don't talk to me, Channel Nine, because this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. You want to control narratives about me all the time. You want to say this, want to do this. I'm going to fucking be me 24 seven. Like it or not, don't interview me. That's do you know what I mean? I think I think that's his take on it. Otherwise, he wouldn't be acting like this. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like. He wouldn't have doubled down on He wouldn't it, have doubled so. down, tripled down, quadrupled down. He just yeah. went, you know, yeah, don't, yeah, don't write a story on me either. Hey, don't write a story That's on exactly me, That's exactly what they're going to do. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Like he was just taking a piss and he's like, he got to that, he's got to that level where I just don't think he cares. Yeah. And I he's also like, plays like, good football, judge me on my football, not the, not the man I am. I'm a father. I'm a great human. He knows who he is. Yeah. And this is why he just does what he does. He's super comfortable with his own Exactly. Skin, and it's good. Yeah. And I'm just saying, just don't. Simply because of the people that are listening, and he is a role model within the community. That's it. Yeah. When you slip up, pull do not. Back a bit. Pull yeah. Back don't go down because the fourteen-year-old kid in Taree, the fourteen-year-old kid out in in Dubbo, up in Queensland. You know, like he's like, you know. But, but yeah, but also like, I understand. Yeah, and I agree, and I agree, and I, I, now I'm going to feel like I'm a hypocrite to myself, and I, and I always try to play devil's advocate on. Like I'm always going back and forth, but I'm almost like, you know what kids are like. I know what kids are like. They swear more than anything. But I'm just saying that's what, that this is what the, the the narrative is going to be like. He's a role model. Yeah. He's this. He's that. Look at the pieces of shit of role models out there that your kids are looking at, and these influencer wankers. Yeah, that's your fucking role models there. <laughs> yeah. Look at these influencers. Look at fucking Kim Kardashian and all these other idiots. Yeah. They're your influencers. Troll ain't influencing these younger kids. Luke has got some. He would have some influence. He has influence, but, but I mean, like, you cannot be just looking at – just say when we're younger, if I saw Mal Meninga swear like that, I'd be like, oh, my God, I'd be so shocked. But the kids these days sitting on Instagram with all these fucking idiots, influencers on there, swearing, doing this, doing all dumb shit, all that kind of stuff, they're influenced by that. I'll, I'll, I'll say this quickly because Luke has got some, something for us in a bit. I will say – as a kid, we obviously would watch – I'd watch comedians that would swear all the time. I'd watch movies where people would swear all the time. Just because they did it on the movies or or on the you know on a, on a comedy show or what it may be or if it happened at school, I still didn't say that shit around my parents. No. I would say it around my mates. We'd swear all the time around my mates. When we ever got around parents or like older people, I'd, it's not like just because I was influenced yeah, by – Yeah, when you're watching Eddie Murphy Delirious. Best. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't mean I'd ever go and swear in front of my parents or so I'd get a clip. So it's not up to – This is this – is it's the not account- up to the uh, uh, comedians. It's not up to actors. It's not no. up to footy players to. It's up to the parents. Way. Correct. It's up to the parents. Parents your kids probably. If I was if, if even if I hear that, I'm st- still intimidated by my dad. If to you're sitting there going, "Oh my god, it's Latrell Mitchell's fault because my kid's swearing," you're not parenting right. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't blame Latrell. Latrell's just being Latrell. Like, yeah, you don't. Parents, point, it's your fault. You know. Mate, it's, it's easy <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Like, I look at it and they, they, that's what they're trying to control. Like he's a role model. He's this, uh, he's yeah. that. Look at what your kids are looking at on fucking TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, all these fucking dickheads on there. Before we move on, mate, the people at see 
Yeah, now, now there's passions coming out, little oh. parents coming out. It's the, it'll, it, there's a certain demographic where they are, you know, anyone our age, probably an under, probably like, ah, oh, whatever, troll me. He's throwing a few swear words. Anyone over our age bracket and a little bit older, they're always going to be like, eh. <laughs> whinge, yeah. whinge, anyway, whinge. What do you got? And we sort of whinge as well. Uh, so, you sort of. Oh, yeah. So, Luke, if I was Dobbo, yeah, Dobbo, if, if he. If he could, could have controlled the interview, no, not having to crack a dobber, but he could have just went, mate, it's live, mate, just chill out a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, like maybe put that in his ear. I'm not sure what he – maybe they did say that, but they yeah. said it right at the end. Okay, okay, mate. You know, like – but they let him talk. Yeah. Yeah, they just let him – they just let him It was good talking. It was good advertisement. Sorry, Lukey's question was for people Maybe Triple M it. just all about the views. Well, listen to this, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Triple M are catching strays now for no reason. Yeah. Luke, Lukey's question was, which people wouldn't have heard um, – could the interviewer have done a better job by – and it was Ben Dobbins who was interviewing mm. by telling Troll to pull up. By that stage, it was – you know, he's obviously just he's rolling. He's tear. It's very hard to get a word in too when Troll's rolling and and he was in, he was uh, very passionate. I'll, I'll give an example. I um, was doing SEN. This is for a Saturday morning show that I do with the Missile and uh, I got Dill Brown to call in. I forgot – like Dill didn't know it was no swearing and that because he's mm. done stuff on podcasts and it's six again yeah. with us. And uh, Dill was just – pretty much swearing the whole time, yeah. right? But we had a 15-second delay, so our producer was, yeah. was just going, eh, 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 When I was on SCN, the couple times, remember? You slipped up your feet. So here, <laughs> let, let me tell you a story about this. So I get Mace to fill in for, for Missile for us, and, mate, we, we sit down and go, Mace, this is how we roll. This is a bit of a plan. And, uh, and, uh, and we go, the look. Producer's this, like. Producer's like, no swearing on this. He goes, come on, mate. I'm a professional. I've been doing this. He goes, I've been doing this for years. The very first sentence he swore and give, her, give her, I had to go eh, and get rid of it. <laughs> it was one but, and then yeah. I didn't swear the whole time. Because I get checked a lot. Yeah. Terry Lamb, the great Terry Lamb, always mm. when I was young goes, It's always the OGs, Willie, eh? stop swearing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like stop swearing all the time. Uh, Matty Hill, who I do events with, you know, I do uh, IPE events. Great guy. I do a lot of origin events with him. I thought uh, that'd be six to get at those events. No, no, no. Right? But he goes, just be careful how much you swear. Okay. I said, like, you know, it might be a few words because when I do get passionate about because it's New South Wales and Queensland, so I might get a, a few little words in here. Well, but at the start, there would be probably a few too many, right? Yeah, yeah okay. So he, Matty Hill, love him to death. He goes, just check yourself on the amount of swearing you're doing. Yep. And I don't really try and swear that much normally, right? Sometimes if I'm talking, it just sort of slips Same. out, you know. If I'm getting passionate about something, it'll slip out. But very conscious of the fact, like where I, it depends what setting I'm in, right? If I'm talking in corporates, if I'm doing this and that, company, it ain't going to be that much swearing. It depends on the company you've got. I can articulate myself enough not to swear. I think that's, I just like swearing sometimes when we're talking about footy. So do I. Because it's just Ugh. yeah, fuck. I'm with you. All right, mate. But uh, the- Bulldog Richie. Oh yeah, Bulldog <laughs> Richie. Settle down, son i got a good relationship with Bulldog. I had to pull him up because I didn't like the fact what he said. So me and Bulldog, I see Bulldog at most of the things. We'll shake hands and we'll be fine. Yeah. He just knows. It's what he said. He goes, well, Mason's earned the right to say what he wants, blah, blah, blah. Yep. But I didn't think he should have swore. Obviously, he doubled down on the Latrell Mitchell shit. Yep. You know, it's, just, it's the podcast, mate. This is We can say what we want. Like, you can print what you want. Yeah. So don't think you can print all this bullshit and not get called out on it. So it's funny. We again- It was pretty funny. But I, I got no... Problem with Bulldog. Really? I had a problem with his fucking article. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Like Done. When, so we'll when, have a beer. When people – um, I guess take it when, personal. So don't take it Yeah, take yeah some personal. people take it personal. And, and I was, again, speaking to Missile about this before we are doing the show on Saturday morning. And he has been told by a couple of journos that he knows that uh, <laughs> not only uh, the journos – uh, watching or, or see our clips, but they're also scared of you. <laughs> and, I, and I gave an example of when um, I was in the car with you, and I won't name who the journo was, and, and you had a bit of a crack. So when Mace has these cracks as well, and like people think we've got a problem oh, with the yeah. media journalism or, or different shows, not. like if you have a crack at 360 for a specific part of the show, you're not like you don't hate the show. Yeah. You just the point that they made on the show. So someone from 360. <laughs> Had, had he Mason gone at him? This is a couple of years ago. We'd gone back. Me and Mason's in the car. He gets him on loudspeaker, 
And I, do you remember this a couple of years ago? And then you started. He called you and goes, oh, he's going back and forth. I could tell in his voice that how, yeah. intimid- how yeah, intimidated yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. But you were just like, love you, mate. Hey, I just disagree with what you just said. chill out, mate. Yeah. Like, it's just don't take it personal, yeah. right? You just you, Sometimes when I'm watching TV, right, just say with the media, the media at the moment, right, they've got these – they are they are journalists, right? Yeah. They write great stories in the Telegraph. They, they're not analysts of the game. No. In my opinion, they're not analysed. They can't analyse games and they shouldn't be sitting on t- – just because they're on TV right now, a little bit of an ego problem. They think they can say whatever the fuck they want and just – and they can tr- control narratives. I get it. If you write for the Telegraph or you write for the Herald or whatever, you're really good at that. You're not really good at analysing games. Yes. Leave it difference. to the le- – like, so when, when I'm talking about games, I'm analysing games, people are going to listen to me more than they're going to listen to a fucking journalist who has never, ever played the game, has never been in a training session, has never done anything. So when we break down games and we talk about some of the topics in the game, yep. they're going to listen to us. They're not going to listen to Paul Kent. They're not going to listen to Buzz Love or you. fucking Crawley. Love, Love you all, boys. <laughs> but I'm just saying they're not going to listen to those guys because they have no credibility. They've never played Origin. They've never played Tests. They've never played games. They've never been in the dressing sheds or anything. They're fucking journalists. They write really good stories and articles yes. on fucking life. Okay, but can I just say one thing, and I think you'll agree with this though. Even though you're critical of them having their opinion, mm. I think they're entitled to yeah, their opinion. Yeah, of course opinions. they are. Listen, my, my thing with this is though, but also they can't then be critical of us for <laughs> responding on our perception of the game or players' perspectives yeah. of the game. Like – you don't have to play – like for me, the reason our podcast works really well is you've played internationals. Yeah. So you can give the mindset of an origin player, yeah. of a test player, of a grand final winner, Clive Churchill winners. I was a journeyman. So my perspective yeah. is always going to be different. And same thing, if you want to write an article on a player and you have a crack at someone – don't be fucking surprised if we pull you up. Yeah. Because we're coming at you from, all right, you might you might be writing this because you've got inside word. Your inside word. Or you're you're you've got very good footy IQ, but just wasn't good enough to execute it. Well, we were mm. you to the highest level. So if we then do come back at you, don't fucking sook about it. And we do our due diligence. We have a connection with the players, Correct. mate. Like we talk to them. And yep. So when you say your shit on TV, make sure it's fucking very credible because yes. we'll hold you. I'll hold you accountable because even with the Benji thing, mm. I just didn't think it was right to do that to Benji. Yep, and you know, I agree. Like, and then like, and I will show. I've got a great relationship with all the media outlets. There's a couple that are just absolute flogs, mm. but that's in any any business, that's right? Life. Any that's just life. But mm. most of the guys, mate. I'll shake their hands. We'll have a laugh at when we meet up the fucking New South Wales like reunions or when they name the fucking side. I have no bad blood against them. Yeah. They might think that, but I fucking come up and laugh <laughs> yeah. and shake their hand because I don't take things personal. Mm. Like imagine all the shit. Mm. If I took things personal with the shit that those guys write, I'd fucking kill them. You'd be blacklisted. I'd be, <laughs> I would go up to them and have proper bad energy and they would understand it yep. but they never get that from me because yep. i don't take things personal yeah you know you're doing your job and whatever you write some shit i don't give a fuck what you write yeah well, we sort of do but <laughs> we li- as listeners and i don't read the telegraph and i don't watch fucking 360 i yeah. just watch little snippets i do and i tell mason See, that he I get tells him, me and then i gotta watch it and I'm like, oh, he gets it. fired up and then we that's the beauty of our show <laughs> All right, mate. Let's love get you, three sixty. Love you, three sixty. Love, love Braith. You know, you know, he's doing a good job holding that whole thing together. B-A. Fucking ba. Yeah, Braith and Asta. He's the greatest human. Yeah, he's been kills he, it, mate. Kills yeah. it. He's um, he's got a good rhythm at the moment, doing great things. Killing it, mate. He's uh, all over. Pretty much, he's the face of Fox now. I'm just trying to think. If he was not on that show, what would that show be like? Yeah, be pretty so ordinary, man. Who was the OG? Oh, Benny Eichen, eh? Was doing it. I didn't mind Benny Eichen, yeah. but he's got nothing on Braith. No, nah, Braith's next level. I agree. All right, let's get into form lines from the game so far, mate. So what I want to do is I want to look at the form line of the undefeated teams. Uh, we'll go through the teams that are only on one dub, and we'll go through because uh, they're in three different categories, and then we'll go down to twelve to seventeen, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six teams that haven't got a dub so far. So on form line. Uh, and the best for and against at the moment is the Canberra Raiders. You've got the Raiders, Cowboys, Sharks, Manly, Storm, all have five wins. Sorry, mate, this isn't in the thing. I'll just read I'm it out just to you. Okay. Sorry, it's not in there. <laughs> I, I'm, I've gone to the NRL yeah. app, so I'll, I'll, right. I'll read this out here as we go. So five teams have got two wins. Uh, on for and against, uh, it is a differential of 36 for the Raiders, and right down the bottom is the Storm 12 who have scraped – Mm. Buying a couple of really big wins. Raiders, Cowboys, Sharks, Seagull, Storm. 
who do you like the most in that form line? Considering Raiders and Cowboys have both played the Knights, Raiders did it comfortably in round one, mm. and Cowboys probably should have got beaten against the Knights. Yeah. But then you look at a team like the Storm, who have probably played better quality. Yep. Penrith, round one, and uh, the Warriors, who they obviously – they probably should have lost that game as well. Mm. Uh, any of those five stand out for you? I like Manly. Most impressive? Manly's, Manly's my number one. Okay. What they did over in Vegas was impressive. Right? Yeah. Even Wait. though it was against South and South haven't looked that great, you're still happy with Man, that? They, they, they went after it, South. Roosters yeah, they, was probably yeah. more impressive, Ro- wasn't and it? The Ro- and, then the, and then the Roosters. At, yep. You know, at Brookie, at their home. You know what I mean? Like they just – they look like the full package. They do, from wingers all the way into the front rows and even their bench. You know who's looked good? Nathan Brown. Nathan Brown's good, man. He's, yeah. added, he's adding something. I knew at the start of the year, when, he, when, a, when a person like that, when you get a kid like that who's played at the highest level. He's a bit different than a kid for us. He's not a kid yet. He's close he's, to 30 he's, now. Yeah. He's, he's nearly an OG. Yeah. Nearly. Young man. you got to retire. When a, young man, when a young man like that who has been at the top of his game, played Origin and everything like that, played yeah. in the grand final, and then was on the outer, not yeah. many people after him, and you give him a chance just he- to just to imp- just to imp- just to get in that top thirty to get that contract. Like he's got that dog in him, you know, yeah, and, it's, and it's and it's and it's made him hungrier than ever. He's like people starting to doubt him. Like, hey, can you still play when you haven't got a contract? You know, you're fighting for a, a one year deal, right? Mm. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and he, you know, he like, just got upgraded. To yeah, top he did, 30. and he deserves everything he gets because yeah. he works his ass off. Now he knows his role at, at at Manly. He comes off the bench. He's not trying to pass. He's not trying to overplay his hand. He gets in that really good shape because he's on that right side of the field. Comes bang off the left foot, straightens up, bang, or goes straight behind the ruck. He's really good at that. You know what he's done in the first two games, which is again, I don't mind him ball playing. I just hate the out the back shape that he does. Just so this time he's got. I feel like in the first couple of games, I don't know if it's Sebes or, or his own thing. He's just he's getting the ball, shaping up a little bang early tip yeah. on to the back rolls to a front roll, and then he's rolling again. It after. is Sebes because the only one who should be doing that in that team is Jakey. Yes. You can't have two of them. Yes, All the I rest agree. need to be banging, banging, Punch going, going in. Because he runs a really good overs or he runs a really good unders on the left side. Like if you're a Prosecco or someone, just get a little bit wider, get to, get at C, early ball. Yep. You know what I mean? You're going to get one-on-ones and then quick play the ball. So he knows his role better than ever now because that Parramatta, he was overplaying his hand. He's getting time. a lot of the, He was getting a lot of carries. He was always going out the back. He's getting that yeah. wide ball and then out the back. Like Most of the times he should be digging in by himself. Yeah. And also, or a little early ball to the front guy. And again, what we talked about, Junior was better at it than – him so he should have been punching yes. off junior more than he should was doing yeah, you only himself. need one of those guys you get yep. your cam murray's you got your victor radley's you got your jake chaboyevich you got isaiah Yo's. not many other people run that play yep. as good as you know you might see the front rollers do a bit of a block play every now and again but it's nowhere near as good as yeah. as those four players that i mentioned then yeah you know, so like, even ruben cotter does it a little bit but he's fucking going he yeah. you better be fucking you better account for him because he'll run straight through your chest if you don't yeah yeah, and he can pass it out the back. He's got some high skill set. Yeah, I I love Ruben Cotter more because I know he's got it in his bag, and mm. he never overuses it. I think some of the other guys, even your name, can overuse it at times. And they like Radley, yeah. for instance, last year he went like he he used it too much. Remember, mm. and then and then this year he's been a lot more. He's he's playing yeah. a lot straighter. Yeah, so man, I think. Cowboys, just because how impressive they were in round one, and then they just got out of that game. They yeah. should have got beaten, man. They should have not only but, got beaten, they should have got flogged by the Yeah, knots. but they stayed in the game yep. and they fucking dropped so many balls. Val, we said Val probably had his worst game yep. in, the, in the history of his whole career, which is saying something. He never really has an off game. He's never less than a seven. He's even about eight the, or nine. Even the, the kicks, kicks were off, everything like that. Everything. And they still managed to pull it out. That says a lot about the team, the resilience, the trust in the system, knowing that they're going to win. All right, about, what about sorry, the sorry. The Knights have never won up there. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Oh, no, they've never won at the new stadium, which has only been around for three or four years, but they haven't won in like 10 years in North Queensland. 15 years or something like that. It was crazy. The, the, oh, was it 15? Oh, it's all crazy, the, yeah. It's the old stadium and Yeah, everything. the old stadium as well. Oh, I thought the stat was no, just man, No, man, no, no, no. It's only two, three years old, that. They've only uh, played up there twice. Oh, fuck. This goes forever. Well, all right, one, we've got one team, one game win teams, Dolphins, Eels, Roosters, Broncos, Panthers, Dragons. Eels and Panthers. Yeah. They're the ones that come out of that. Dragons. I thought the dragons would were- got the roosters and broncos in there as well. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, mm. and those those two. That that'll be nearly the eight. I would say. Seven. I would say. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I'd say probably the eels are probably the most impressive. Then I'd go Panthers, then Roosters, then Broncos. Yeah. So I think Broncos, even though they have got the win against South, it wasn't. I know they're capable a lot more. The jury's but the out line, for South. Mm. You know, if they if just say that who I'm not sure who will re um they got roosters we'll preview those games. Oh. 
they got Roosters this That's week. That's going to be. I might go to that game. It's at Allianz. The Allianz Stadium, yeah. Yeah, um, that'd be a good game to go to. But yeah, that's that's gonna be that could set their season up, or it mm. could really fucking people would just be coming at them. But like, everyone would be coming at South if they lose this one. Jackie Whiten back this week. You think he plays centers? Jeez, um, they'll, they'll probably give Ilias another game. Yeah, I think so. I'm I'm, I'm still at, I'm still on the same level where I think they just give him four years. You know what I mean? But sometimes you need to be dropped sometimes. Four games. Four years, like just to see if we can oh, – then, okay. then you can reassess. But this doesn't mean you get four years of starting at seven. Yeah. This – you know, he got dropped last year as well. Yeah. So like, you know, if he – I'm not sure. I could see a world where Cody Walker plays seven and Jack plays six. So how – you're not giving him four years. Lockie Elias, they lose to South Sydney. The week after they've got you, you guys, the dogs, on Good Friday, if – they don't get results, or they don't, that it doesn't. If they're look one like and it's three, working. or something like that. That's, they'll change it. Mm. Is that when you say? Is that what you're giving Lockie Ellis? Do you think? Well, I said I always say like just the young halves like Katoa and all these young kids. Yep. Give them four years to impress to get another contract. You know, you know, to, you know fan bases. To, don't yeah, give I know, them four I know years, that. Though? I'm just saying, but the club should before yeah. they go get out after two. Yeah. When you debut a kid at 18, he's yeah. not going to be by the time he's he's 22 after four years. Yeah, he's only just coming in. He's understanding games and structures and all this sort of shit. Finding himself in the team, they respect him because these young 18 year old kids going to tell grown ass men what to do. Yeah, especially OGs in that team with with Latrell and Cody and Jai Arrow and That's Tom a, Burgess and it's a tough kid. You got some. Big, Pam Murray, big char- characters in that team, mm. man, and strong personality. So if he's not that dude, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to give him about four years. Then you'll reassess and go, okay, he's our man, you know. But don't just like give him two and a half years, three years, and then go, no, nah, he's not good enough, right? Because mm. it ain't his problem. All of it, you know, a lot a lot is is being on his head at the moment. Right? I'll say this one thing just before we move on. We'll get to the teams that haven't won yet. Is and if you can add anything to this, yeah. if you want, I think he should play with house money. I, f- I feel like if they lose against the Roosters, his name is going to be the name that's under the pump before Jason Demetrio starts to feel the pressure himself. You'll feel it. So he needs to start playing with house money and go, fuck it. If I'm going down and we're going to lose games, then I might as well get my hands on the ball and make it about me. Like, like we'll it'll break, be my fault. Yeah, we'll break the game down. Yep. Because some of the, some of the shit that South pulled was just like, wow. Did All they right. even listen to the rules? Yeah. All right, so uh, five teams, one, two, three, four, five, six teams haven't won yet. Two of those teams have had the bye, West Tigers and Titans. Um, so you've got the West Tigers, Titans, Warriors have lost two, Knights have lost two, Rabbitohs have lost two, Bulldogs have lost two. Out of those four bottom teams, Mace, Warriors, Knights, Rabbitohs, Bulldogs, are you? is there a team that you're not worried about you think are, are going to be Warriors. better than – Warriors, yeah. They showed enough to, to beat um, – I agree. To beat both teams, right? I know they're, only, they're good for about – 30 minutes. minutes against Cronulla, but they were they were up for it. They were down 18-6 against Melbourne and they come back and got a lead on them, mm. right? And then they got beat with one of the best finishes I've ever seen. Let's, yeah, we'll get we'll to get that. We'll get to that, but like <laughs> you know, to get beat like that, you're like, oh, f- come on. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, I thought there was one, you know, I put it in the notes. So we'll leave it for the notes because I yeah. thought there was a, p- a part about the Warriors that really stood out But that's the team I'm not worried about because yep. like – you know, getting eighteen six, that could have that could have went anyway. They still had the resolve to get back get back in the game and pretty much nearly win it. Yep. All right, mate. Let's get on to the games. Reviewing the games, kicking it off Thursday night, eight PM. The Broncos twenty eight defeat the Rabbitohs eighteen. A bit of a sloppy game from both. That's what I was talking about with the form line of the Broncos. But eventual winners for me. Uh, nowhere near the same team as they were last year. The completion rates for both teams sixty nine and sixty five percent, mate. That completion rate. Uh, and the and, and the fashion in that which they lost uh, possession in those games, you're not going to beat other teams with, with that sort of play. Like they were lucky they were playing yeah, each other bad. to be so close. Yeah, I think um, yeah the level of play was was off. Must have been slippery as fuck that ball. Yeah, it did everything look like you know everything they did in the like even Hetherington his first kickoff. You know what I mean? You know you got to hold on to that ball. It just like sort of slipped out right at the end. You know what didn't help? He started going sideways, getting to the yeah, middle of the field. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was weird. I like Hetherington as well, but I, I – It was a bit off. It was a bit off in that game. In my notes, which is at the end, again, I like Hetherington. I think he's got a ceiling. Marty Tapau is a, has been a fine player for a long – I think he's passed his user by date. Mm. I don't know why Xavier Willison's not playing over either of those two players. Yeah. There must be – I don't know. Did he get injured or something? Did he get injured? Is he like – not not a good trainer because 
it's puzzling. It is honestly puzzling to me. Sometimes, I don't know, maybe I'll look at it and go because I, I always get caught up in – I like players with potential. Maybe yeah. as coaches they might – they prefer to see players that they know have been there and done that before. But I'm watching that maybe game Maybe at the going, start of the year they sort of want to get those wins, maybe. But I, I but maybe, looks, that's maybe. The I'm just thinking. Is I just, want, star games I just need, I just need him to play. Yeah, same. I really need him to play. I want. I would be – you'd be looking at him. You'd be have to account for that guy when he's coming off the bench mm. all the time. Hetherington, I'd keep Hetherington because he tightens up the ruck and he just tackles everything. Yeah, defensively I like It'd be either Marty or Willison. Um, and another guy you mentioned, he was close to your body science BSC dog mm. of the week. Seventy five minutes, two hundred and twenty two meters, thirty five tackles. This is another reason That's I crazy. want Wilson as well because when Paddy Carrigan uses those nice, beautiful plays, he played more direct, dropped Payne Haas. When you got Wilson coming off the bench, he can drop yeah. him underneath the, as well. That, Paddy Carrigan was the difference. What about the nice boy he gave Hetherington? Beautiful. Oh ball. yeah, and Hetherington overs, it. overs, and then unders, and then just put it on his chest. He's it was so just, nice, it was just man. too good a ball. <laughs> too good a ball. Yeah, it, it was, was too good for him because he. I don't think he expected the gap to open up and how Paddy created that. He got white it was wine too fever good. And he just good went one. fuck it open, just hit him. You know, like it was just like it's shame. Obviously, he's, he's a good player, Hedinson. He's tough. You know, he plays a lot of good minutes. He had a bit of an off game. Yeah, but um, they end up winning the game. But um, yeah, Paddy was outstanding. They really lost their way when um Payne Haas went off. Yeah, they did. He, he's in doubt for this week too. I wonder how his knee is. He's in doubt for this week. He might. He, these stats, I think he got like 180 something meters, right? Mm-hmm. In uh, in in fucking 45 or 50 minutes. Yeah, he's a freak. <laughs> that was a down game for him. Well, 26 tackles, no misses, or something freakish like that. 180 meters, and he was just toying around. Him and Reynolds, uh, I think uh, – actually, Ren is apparently is not going to be named at all. Jock Madden's going to come play half, and then he's in serious doubt. The thing with this team, Mace, and I think you'll agree with this in another team that which we'll talk a little bit later on, is when you've got Paddy Carrigan doing what he's – 75 minutes, 222, 35 tackles. I think he had one miss and zero errors. And then you've got Payne Haas doing what Payne Haas does every week. They had 10 errors from their back line. Yeah. Like their forward pack is working so hard to create a platform. And I know it's one of those things you live and die by the sword – of the talent that you've got in that back line. But those young, like Walsh in particular, Not three. with the fundamentals, man. Not with the fundamentals. Yeah. Hold on to the ball. It's easy when it's just like if it's in a tackle and you just you lose it and it's, you know what I mean? Like some contact. Some contact is a really good contact. But some of those, you know, it was just the ball. Well, sp- speaking to some of the, the comments, uh, listening to some of the comments after the game, it's just like the ball's like a cake of soap. Yeah. Well, they've got to concentrate. Yeah. Because I the mean, middles are working I mean. their ass off. It's harder for the middles. Yeah. So – like Walshy three, think Katoni two, maybe Selwyn two, or or Ezra. Like that, like all their stars. Like use a fucking guns, hold the ball. You like you didn't require the big play against this team. Yeah. you were just going to run through South Sudan. And then they win you win you the game, and you're like, and, ah, that's all right. And then they and then they <laughs> make a fifty meter break, chip and chase over the the top. Yeah, Walshy jumps on a ball, yeah. the trail misses, and you, you go. know little things like that. You're just like, ah, okay, I'll make those tackles. Would it, would it be hard for you like? You played with – I'd say that your back line was more of a tradesman yeah. back line, like Luke Patton, El Masri, Workhorse. Like you didn't really have flash. Pride ourselves on like just completely. How would, how, how would you go though? You got this star-studded forward pack. What would you be like if you they were making errors like oh, that? would be filthy. Yeah. And I think everyone was filthy. If, if we made mistakes, the backs would be filthy. Yeah, okay. You know, like you had Braith, you had Shifty, you had Willie Tonga, you had like, um, you know, Hazard. Oh, had yeah, Tonga Utah. had that yeah, Tonga, man. It's yeah, Tonga flair, bro. Yeah. So like everyone was – you know, you'd just be filthy on anyone if anyone dropped the ball because you just have – why would you do that? You just have to tackle again. Mm. You know what I mean? It yeah, sucks and it's so hard sucks. with the guys. With the demand of the middles mm. now at this time, like with the six to goes, with the – with the lifting the leg, just I told you on yes. the text, like you watch how many people. So just say, if you run, just say ridiculously hard, like Payne Haas and stuff like that, and he usually stands in tackles, and usually they'll try and lift that one leg up, get him off balance, sort of try and get that leg in and try and get him on his back. If you can't do that now, that third man is not even trying to do it. He's just getting back. So there's a, you watch how many standing tackles there are. You're just trying to hold on for one, two. Because being a big guy myself – to be on the ground and to get up back and just to kick, hit, continue getting up on those late little like leg sweeps and stuff like that, it used to suck. Yeah. Now you can't do it. So if you're big, fast, fit, everything like, like a Payne Haas, Fenua Blake, um, even Carrigan, all these sort of blokes, Tino, they, they're not. You know, there'll be about five tackles in the five hit ups of their of their hit ups. Like 
you won't be going on the ground. Do you think defensively too, like defenders don't mind it? Because remember in video we used to go like if a oh, player was third standing, man in, third man get, get in. Now you go. No, nah, I didn't want to give away. No, penalty. no, no, the penalty. And the, the, the <laughs> thing is, so so just say look how how demanding it is on the middles, right? So, you, you know, the six to goes any sort of penalty, and then that is a as a penalty. The the fucking onside rule at the kicks are penalties. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you just you're the ones that have to tackle. Yeah. The wingers ain't they don't care. Well, obviously, the wingers do some tough carries. Obviously, when you're coming out of yardage, but that's your job. You're not doing like the tackles. You're not doing four or five tackles in the middle. Well, that was and then my the point kick with pressure. The question before, like the error, the back, the Brisbane Broncos uh, back line making so many errors. It's the middles that have to do all the fucking defense all the time. Um, on South, I write this down. This is I think you'll agree with me on this. I write down how did Demetrio watch film with the Broncos last week with Paddy Carrigan on the edge and how clunky the Broncos looked, and then go, you know what, I'm going to move our best ball player to the edge and take him out of the game in Cam Murray. I, straight off the bat, I went, I w- if I was you know, punting as, as much as I would have, I used to love live bets, I would have loaded up on the Broncos because I was like, you've got to play Cam Murray. Like how important are the middle links through the middle these days? And, every, and South looks super clunky. You know when they did look good, and, and I highlighted it because you wanted to speak mm. about it, is when Havili come on and played direct yep. with a nice little bit of ball playing through the middle, but it was too late. The game was already yeah. – I know they got back into it, but I felt like they'd lost all the momentum. And you wanted to speak specifically about how hard it is to defend Havili out the back yeah. and Mowali hitting that line. Why yeah. is that so hard to defend, mate? Well, it's so hard because just say – it usually happens on about the third third or fourth tackle, right? So you get to the other side. So the post here, you get to about four metres – Oh, about four metres left of the left post, right? And the, the lead runner is starting at C. And he's running at C and then he breaks late. Then Harvili comes out on the outside of the post, right? So you've got the four man always defends on the outside of the post. Yeah. The so left you, four. So, you're, so you're trying to get to him. Yep. You're trying to get to Petakura. Piakura. Piakura, yep. right? He had to come in and then it's just – then you've got someone out the back and then you've got Ezra Mam sitting there going – what? Who am I going to take? Because you still got five on the outside. Because you still got these guys sweeping out the back really late. It's yeah. the perfect play if you execute it right. Yeah. It's just a simple block play. Who's and the then most he plays important unders. player in that? Is it the play the ball? Is it Havili? Is the it? Le- it's the play the ball yep. and the lead runner. Lead runner. The lead runner needs to account. He needs to start. There's a because everyone's so jammed in around the ruck there. That's a, this is ruck recognition, ruck spaces, right? Yeah. You got to know where. It's only one lead. You got one lead, so you can get a little bit wider if you're B. You can't be tucked into the A man like you're standing right next to him. Yeah. So you're just going to stand at C, and then the next guy is fucking Piacura. Yeah. Like he has to come I in. To, that's he has my to position. Come in. I have to go. Yeah, but you need to bring your middles yeah. so you've got good spaces. So you're further than the post. Yeah. You know what I mean? So those middles, three middles can cover at least fucking eight meters. You can cover more. But that's just spaces and knowing where you are in the middle, right? So if you get these middles who have blinkers on yeah. most of the time, they're not even caring. The A's tucked in, which you should be because you've got to count for the nine. But B, if I'm looking up and then the, the lead runner's right over there, I need to fucking get out a little bit because yeah. he's already on the outside of C. He should be, you should be, you should be getting, getting at him easy. And if he does hit him, you should. If he hit runs this way, you should be able to hit him and get the guy out the back, get half Yeah, and then you can then you can space it out. So you're right. The most important person is the lead line. The if lead you, runner. The lead runner is tight and gets it genuine. B. Yeah, and genuine yeah. because he needs he starts at C only because A and B are in each other's pockets. You don't have to be. A stays tight on the marker. B gets really – gets wider because there's only one lead runner. It's a fucking block play. Mm. And it depends on who it is too because if it's someone that you – If it's Tom Burgess or something like that, yeah, yeah. you sort of got – you've got to get in front. You've got to line up. But like you, as soon as the ball goes, A and the a and the a and needs to go and the marker needs to get out at, at fucking the lead runner yeah. so the guy at B and C can go fucking out the back to Harvilli. Double D as well. So you got to double D and get at Harvilli so he doesn't have to fucking come up and square P. Cure up and then Ezra Mam's like, fuck, what am I supposed to do? Because mm. you've got a guy out the back of that. Yeah. It's fucking great play. It's very underrated. It is. If yeah. it's executed right, you usually score. And a lot of teams want to play through the front door. It's just on that well. other side of the post. Yeah. Because you're going to have about four. You probably it's have It's a four, distraction. The post yeah, is a distraction. Four or five. Where's the, where's the fullback in this situation? Mm. Is he tucked? So for people that don't know, when you're at a four-man and you're the guy like Pierre Pier Curry is, you're lining up on the post and you rely heavily on your peripheral vision. So when I used to defend there, I used to get a feel, but I also used to communicate really well with my middles. Once you start and it's a quick play the ball and you've got the post there that's obstructing your view, you can't see 
who your middles are, communicate to them, who your uh, fullback is. So you're sort of going into the first step blind mm. without any comms, communication. And then once you see it developing the way it is, you've got to go, fuck, I've got to go because they can't score under the post. And then that nice little tip on. So usually, usually he would be at the post if the, if the play the ball was on the numbers line. Right. Yes. But it was about four meters in from the numbers line, Perfect which spot. trick, which tricks the four man into seeing. I just need to be on the post. He needs to be five meters away from that, and up a little bit, calling these guys out. Mm. Get over here. Get over here, because he can see the shape fanning around. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's up to the four man to really communicate with his middles. It's up to middles to identify shape, identify the shape. It's a fucking block play. I got lead. I got out the back. Boom, boom. Shut it down. Yeah. If not. To try. It's tough. It's tough playing it's in the middle in this day and age. Tough, mate, but it's tough being the left four as well. Um, they didn't – so that was on the other end of scoring tries. I thought, again, Latrell – like, I reckon Latrell's saved yeah. six tries in the first two rounds. Mm. So no, he's good, man. It's Defend him really well. Yeah. It's he, obviously – it's a bit clunky in attack, and I think Jack Whiten is going to be a big plus. And for people uh, that have only listened to us to hear the review on the Rabbitohs Broncos, um, when we broke down the ladder, go and have a, a listen to that because my final point on Ilias being the four guy, if things don't uh, go to plan, uh, we spoke a little bit in detail on the ladder about that. So go and listen Just to it. Just the detail, right? The detail in um, with South. Like everybody got the, you know, got the form. Like this is the rules on the downtown thing. Can't be obstruction obstructed the 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 kick pressure. I'm glad you brought this up. Can what do you, you think it? on that rule? I don't like. I don't it. like the rule, but I, it's the fucking rule. Yeah, okay. You know, it's going to cost you games. It's going to cost you a lot of meters, right? The downtown rule, like even Car- Carrigan got flogged in that first set. Do you remember? Did you see that? Someone ran. So Carrigan was on the 20 meter line, and yep. a South player collected. Oh him. yeah, licked him. Yeah, off the kick off. Because you can't just <laughs> people at home like you can't obstruct the people that are kick chasing, right? And yep. that's what you just try and put them off a bit. And someone, I don't know who it was, hammered him. That was off the kickoff. Yeah. Carrigan so- ends up doing something and gets penalised. Cracks I- him in that because that, he was downtown. He, he he already went before the that's before right. the kick. Because so- he wasn't really – he was still fucking – I think oh, – I'm with you. He was concussed. I think, the, I think he was like uh, – maybe not concussed, but he was a little bit all over the shot because – he gets licked by someone off the kickoff. He kept going like this. He got hit in the back of the head. And I hate that rule because I understand why. I think it's a really – I think there's two rules that I don't like and, and I'll see what – I'm mm. interested in here what your point is. I understand why they do the downtown rule, but I like the rule the way it was where if you're in front of the play of the ball for whatever reason, you might just be a little bit fatigued. I don't think it's a super advantage for the middles to just be dawdling through the no. middle for kick chase. So don't penalise them straight away. It's so easy to get out of yardage 50 metres for a penalty where it, I don't think it's affecting the result as much as it no. should. And the other rule, which um, was in the Panthers-Eels game, which I hate, uh, I seen it last week. You can no longer it's it just go up and it obstruct the view of a – a receiving fullback winger now, but they, you know how players used to just try to strike yeah, the fullback throw. You got to go there? for the ball. Now you've got to go for the ball, and um, I hate the rule. What about we pay these fullbacks fucking mm. a million dollars to come down with the footy? Mm. If they can't catch a footy with someone <laughs> running and trying to balk you, yeah. then what the fuck are we doing? Like this has been happening for their whole careers. So and why are we changing it? You know, I don't get like just say with commentators. Oh God, what are they, you know they've been learning this rule for blah blah blah. Or, all preseason, yeah, one preseason. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, bro? These guys have been doing the same shit for ten to fifteen years yeah. as middles. Even Muscle when you're memory. young, you're young. You just as a middle, you stand near the play the ball. You know what I mean? It's a fatigue factor as well when you're yeah. on the back end of everything like that. So I understand it might take a little bit for the middles and inexperienced middles to get up to get used to this shit. Five to six weeks. You know minimum. what I mean? Like give him a bit of time, mate. It's fucking round two. They go, oh, he should be. Oh, what did they not get the memo? Shut up, man. Like just. Now they did get the memo, but they're fatigued. Obviously, they need, they don't want to be there. They don't want to give a penalty away. Like Talis Duncan was standing right there and <laughs> fucking Ilias, just don't kick it into him. Yeah. Move. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, nah, I get, I get it. I mean, like someone move. Talis like, Duncan's just, got to move the fuck out like of the someone way. Someone just move. I'm like, if I'm the kicker, I could just move around Talis Duncan as well, right? And he felt booted. pressure from the inside from the yeah, kick. He had just, kick pressure. It's Talis Duncan was just know, sort of laboring and fatigued. Like, get out of the move, fucking way. I know, move out of the way, but he yeah. was like, that's where you sit. Where you, like, tell us like standing there. Like, where 
And I Ilias like Ilias got Duncan. the ball. I like He Dallas just Duncan. got the ball right next to him. Mm. Like you've got to get a little bit deeper, mate. You yeah. know what I mean? That's where, you, where you're going to catch the ball. Yeah, depth is going to be important. Depth is important, mate. you don't have the blockers anymore. Because you, exactly. Like, yeah. so Talos Duncan just would have been standing there. Like, he didn't expect the ball to be fucking kicked into him. Come on, man. Like, it's, it's, a, still, it's, it's still his fault. It's game awareness. It's still his fault. But I'm just saying, like, if you're a seven, you can you know where you need to situate yourself outside those guys, right? Yeah. And just say, I think um, another person got done where, you know, Payne has – Chased out. Kepi. Kepi just stood and there. He, and he just moved and off his line. And he just stood there. You just can't do that. No, nah, he you moved can, off his line. Yeah, you, I know. You have to basically now completely stop. So if you catch yourself in that position, you've got to stop and you can't just go like Yeah, I know. Like you, so you just can't. You just got to just move out of the way and let like – so it's up to the it's up to the kickers to get deep enough because guys are quick at market. These guys are quick over 10 metres in the middle. Mm. They'll get at you. Mm. You can't stand flat. You can't stand shallow. Unless it's a quick way. play the ball. Yeah. You know, like if it's if it's 55 and last, it's a slow play the ball, that marker is coming at you big time. You can tell the games on Saturday and Sunday watch Thursday night footy because all the games were pretty much pretty – like I watched a lot of the lead runners. Uh, it was the Cowboys really, yeah. really diligent at it. So if you're a middle right, just say you – and you so you just have to stand there, right? That's it. You stand can't, there. So you can be in front of the kicker. Yes, but you just but have once to stand you realise there. you're there, you got to stand completely still and not and wait for him to go f- and move nowhere yeah. near the guy that's trying to put some yeah. Uh, pressure on. Yeah, I'm not sure why they bought the rule in, but it is the rule. It's a bit. Yeah, we we'll, we'll always we was it, always ru- was it ruining the game? Well, I thought some officiating ruined in this game, mate. So let's talk about the Sharks mm. versus the Bulldogs, twenty-five to six. Um, oh god, the scoreline doesn't look great, mate. But mate, fuck, I I called this game. You, your boy, like. I know it doesn't feel any better for Bulldogs supporters yeah. and um, it feels like they've been ripping in really hard. This is this is what happens. When you're a team that's been down the bottom like they have been for the last three mm. or four years, not only do you have to win but you've almost got to win by more. You've got to go harder because yeah. you're going to continually get – you're going to continue to get shit calls, a bit like what the Warriors did last year, where at the start of the year they were complaining about all the times they get, you know, wrist yeah. old and they're on a couple, on the end of a couple of other bad calls in the other this game as well. But you got to fight through them, and I and I felt like they did, they did, but then they eventually just mm. sort of broke at the end, and um, uh, I th- definitely think there were some positives. A couple of calls that I hated. God. That rule is disgusting. There's no way Braden Trindle was going to stop Viliami kick out. Uh, because not, like, what are you doing in the fucking way anyway, yeah. the ref? Like, what? A- it was it was off an offload, and they're saying that he was impeded from getting involved in the tackle. Three meters out on Viliami kick out, Braden Trin. I know Will Kennedy was there as well, but did you oh, watch Olakuatu last night? Like, you ain't was- stopping kick out on Olakuatu with two defenders that close to the line. No. It's a. It was an awful rule. There was a slap across the chest from Stephen Crichton to um, Nico Hines off a off a, a, yeah. a attacking kick. Yeah. Um, there were multiple like 50-50 calls that just didn't go the Bulldogs' way, mate. And uh, look, it doesn't make you feel any better yeah, as, but a, it just, as an ex Bulldogs player. In the back twenty, we just get outclassed, right? Yeah. And that shows the ball, class of the Sharks. Def- yeah, we defended so much. The effort was so much better than the first week. You know, um, it just sucked that they didn't get the win, and it, and it sucked that it blew out like twenty six six or twenty eight six, twenty five six, whatever it was. You know, like it just it didn't reflect the the effort and everything like. But that's just sometimes how the game goes. Yep. You know, that's the difference between you know they have a Nico Hines and a, and a Kennedy and you know some real world class players to finish games off. Well, you, it's interesting you bring that up. I thought one hundred percent Nico was the difference. Yeah. And my again criticism, and we'll get to the Bulldogs in a little bit. Win or lose, you know Nico Hines is going to be the reason or the problem. Because he doesn't uh, stop. He doesn't. He doesn't shy so away from fit. it. He wants to touch the ball three times a set. Uh, he is, you know, really good. They're chipping in now. Well, we, mm. we when we're critical of the Sharks at the start of the year, we're worried about. I think me and you're worried about their left edge yeah. defensively, but also can they provide some spark? Teague Wilton and Braden Trindle. Jeez. Second and third best players on the that on the field. ball, Teague Wilton. That ball, he's the nice, left man. Flick here, that was nice. He he's like, nice. If he can, if defensively he he had he had a few issues last year, but the whole left edge did. To fix it, attacking wise, he's as good as it gets. Yeah, I like him. He's I quality. Like him. Runs hard, big body, physical, hits good. You know, they had. I think it was a communication problem last year. 
You know, yeah. they'll misreads. They'll because they'll, they'll proper clean misreads. Try. I'll I'll I'll, I'll, tr- I'll not disagree with you. I reckon it wasn't a communication. It was a trust issue. Tr- they lost trust in each other. Trust, and they're not talking. Yeah, and that's what happens when you don't talk, and there's no trust, and there's a new combination, and all that kind of stuff. And that's what that's what it was an accumulation of all those things. And now that's what preseason's for. You work on that. You work on those things, and I think they've they've worked on it super hard, and it looks like a proper team. Mm. They look good. We spoke to Jesse Ramian on um, on the he looks good, bro. Well, and he said basically all they did was edge defense and defense the whole preseason. And Fitzy was one of the best edge defenders mm. of all time. Yeah. He knows exactly where you should be, especially with Teague, the young kid. Like Fitzy played left four, right four, in the middle. He knows exactly where you should be. Helped Freddie out for like most of his career, like the back end of his career, Freddie. Um, yeah, he was like a protector he's for He's a Freddie, protector, mate. He? he knows – he was one of the best like left four, right four defenders in the game. And ever, Freddie, Freddie, ever. Freddie was a big body, but he got, he got a little bit older, so yeah, you want to protect your OGs. Yeah. I think he's like 15th year in the game back into the 2000s. So, oh, okay. you know, Fitzy helped him a heap there. But, yeah, they look good, man. But I was, I, was so happy. I was so proud of the Bulldogs, boys. It just sucked right at the end there. It was outclassed Nico going that bang overs – Beautiful overs, you know, like uh, Hutchison backs off a little bit where he should have, you know, should have met, should should have met Teague Hilton at the line there. Wilton, Will- <laughs> you always calling me Hilton. Fucking hell, <laughs> sounds better. Take change your name, yeah. T Hilton, and make your middle name <laughs> Paris as well. <laughs> Teague Paris Hilton. Um, yeah, so you ran a beautiful line, but that could have been stopped. It was just like miscommunication. There. Last tackle, short Nico, time. Nico, beautiful overs line. In, bang, out, squared up. That's his best work. That was that was great to watch, even though it was against my Bulldogs. But I'm like, fucking great play, great line, good ball. I was like – Wilton's ah. ball was outstanding. Yeah. Uh, again, that's another tough call that went against him. Telekai didn't kick that ball. Fucking – And, and little Tyler lock, knocked it on. It had to touch his finger. Yeah. It had to touch his finger. They didn't get any 50-50s, mate. And I it was, was like, gonna... come on, man. That was the one that really got us. Yeah. That, that, that broke got us. Back. That broke us. And I was like – I think that would have sent it to 18-6 that try yeah it did mm. yeah well, we had fight we had fight till the end but um the boys defense they turned up you know i was happy with you know kicks and, and birdo would have copped a fair bit last week um kicks was really good he wanted watching it. those guys that's what champion players do they mm. come out the next week they get you know 15 20 touches birdo has a crack you know critter everybody every, everybody was up for the game man it just sucked Lost that a few, up. a few. First tackle yeah, of the game. I hope he's okay. But how the fuck does um, McInnes just walk out of that? Yeah. What is he made out of? Well, he should have been made taken out of titanium. Off. He should have been carried in a body bag. He 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 should have been taken off HIA. I don't know how he wasn't taken. Bro, off Bro, he's HIA. fine. I don't think so. I caught it he straight away. He got through. He, I mean, he got through. We can all get through. I know, but, but he's, the new fucking- he's an OG, mate. He knows how to get through. He's been hit. Have you seen that head? Yeah. He's been hit a few times. Yeah, he's been hit a few times. <laughs> and I love the fact- I was like, oh, it's because I saw it off the I saw it off the kick. I said, oh, he's out. He's yeah, out. Same. Because I saw McInnes rattle back. Yeah. And then still dove on the ball. Yeah. I'm like, you tough little motherfucker. Get off. <laughs> you get off too. Yeah. Didn't even bother him. Still played an outstanding game. He was he was he was great, McInnes. You know what I thought was excellent for you guys because he wouldn't have ex- been expected to play big minutes like that was Mudders Curran. Yeah, he came on. He played through the middle. He would have played a different role because he would have been expected to come on and play that mm. link role with Jamin Salmon going off. I liked that. Uh, Kurt but you use was uh, Kurt I like Man. Kurt Man. He's the most likely for you. Whoa. So my criticism on Burton again. This is he. So, again, watching that game, he gets his hands on the ball three to four times in the first three to four sets. He runs on the third tackle, gets some early ball to kick. I'm like, all right, fuck, see, Matty Burton's on here. Fuck, I just want him in good ball to get the ball. I know they're having some joy uh, because Hutchinson scored that first drive with Wilson, but um, the one time he sort of gets his hands on the footy a little bit, uh, he gets that offload to fucking um, kicks and kick scores, and then that was it. We didn't really see much Did more you of see how many times kicks had that left arm free? Yeah. And no, and around. nobody up there. Well, that yeah. if he, if I'm not sure whose problem it is, you it's have, if, you freeze, it's if you freeze frame that, not where I'm not sure where the fullback is, and I don't know where Birdo is. Because if someone is pushing up on right next to Kickow, he gives two or three tries. I agree. Or not at least line breaks. But like one, one, one of those, try. one of those was one, a certain try. I know, I know the one. That's you're talking the one. About. I'm just like start then, of the second and then, half, and then you replay it, and you're like. Where, a, where is everyone? It's got to be know? Critter, it's got to be Burton, it's got to be Burton's the one who passed him the ball. Yeah, wrap around, double yeah, down. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, Burton's the one who passed him the ball yeah. and Taff is the fullback. Yeah. I expect both those guys to be on his hip. 
He yep. creates so much kick out, and he was in, and he he want, he was he was on for that game. He was. He was creating a lot of opportunities. Those little opportunities, he needs that. Yeah. You need you need to be pushing with him. He's you the only know one who's in a mood. You got to know, man. Like he comes off that left foot. Jeez, he was looking dangerous, man. I don't if, I, if, I, if we get that uh, kick out every single week, we're gonna we're gonna cause problems because we're gonna go. Okay, we'll go, every time he gets the ball, I need in and outside, inside, outside support. Yeah. It wasn't critters. Critters getting manned up on his own on his own man. Okay, you know, right. but like when the ball when he comes off his left Jesse is Ramian. on his left. Yeah. It's there through the ruck. Yeah, Jesse Ramian was shadowing. Ramian shadows the whole way. He's, yeah. he's one of the best defenders in the game. But yeah, he's going to create those opportunities. We need to nail them. All right, Friday night, eight p.m. The Panthers took on the Eels. This game was a cracker. One of the games of the round, mate. Uh, Panthers twenty six, the Eels eighteen. Um, What's that? Oh, yeah, that was my point. I was trying yeah. to read my notes here. <laughs> this is what I wrote. Parrot don't go the, – the difference between Parramatta when they play Penrith, and I know they got Rissold in the grand final, but for the most part, they love playing Penrith. And yeah. I think they're one team that goes into the game that's not already defeated. Mm. And what I mean by that is when you play top-tier teams, I remember the difference between the mindset from when I was at Parramatta to Manly when we'd play Melbourne, who were dominant during our era, where teams used to be defeated before they played mm. Melbourne. Now it's the Penrith. Yeah. Uh, Para they give themselves a chance every time they play them. Yeah, I like this game. It was good. Um, that Tungo was mad. <laughs> that God damn, I didn't think he was that good. I thought he was good. You know, yeah. does he does he fight for a rep team? He'll be thereabouts. He'll be a contender. Does he? Does he? They go. Just can Tungo put on that left edge or right edge wherever he wants to play? I. That is probably the most contested spot yeah, in the New yeah. South Wales back line. Is uh, the centre spot? Mm. You got. Obviously, Turbo on the troll, who will most likely be favourites for a lot of people. You got Bradman Best to start a little bit slow this year. Uh, Tony's a bit slow off the mark this year. Critter's not looking as good at the Bulldogs. Got some depth. There's, there's some players, and they can play both sides. The only one who's a genuine left centre is Bradman Best. Yep, because he's your left arm carry. Yeah, there's more right centres, isn't there? Yeah, it's mainly yeah. right. Because yeah, yeah, um, oh man, it's it's well, that's got some centres. You've got to pick the right ones. Jack Whiten. Let's see what Jack Jackie Whiten Boyd, looks when yeah. he comes back. Um, just oh, quickly, you would have loved to have seen this. I've got it in the notes. How good was the Moses Lee Hodder cry? <laughs> he nearly got my dog of the week just because of that. Yeah. I love that. I try and when I coach these younger kids, it's all about that late footwork and straightening up. <sighs> Fuck, it's that was beautiful. That was a work of art. Because they've all got it, man. You, no, the, I disagree. Not everyone's got it. Oh, the, that was surprised. a nice Guys movement. like Tino and Payne, they got that oh, right. Oh, yeah, they're the elite. Yeah, they're the elite, elite ones. But like, and Moses has got it. Like, Fish has got it. The big the big dogs have got it, man. Mm. We just never get to exploit it because you never see <laughs> – we never see gaps like that. Yeah, we're that just like, oh, we're just – you know, he saw it and he just went straight for the line. He was oh, smiling. I love it. He knew. He knew. Because the fullback was nowhere near him. He goes, I've got 15 in me. Yeah. I've got the fucking best 15 in me. Because most of these guys, mate, they would match most backs over 20 metres, man. Yes. Short area, yeah. quick. All the time, and that's what we'll, powerful athletes will always quick okay. over twenty and forty. Right, that's what you mean by that. Yeah. yeah okay, so, yeah. like, even like just say with the Bulldogs, me, me, Sonny, Rennie, Roy Asatasi are all running sub fives over forty. Yeah, but use the back rollers. He's a front roller. I was talking more specifically about the. the, the well, Ogre was running a five flat, but could Ogre come off his right like that? <laughs> no, he couldn't. <laughs> Fucking no way. He can if he if you hit him on a short ball and he goes straight. Razza was front row. I'm front Razza row. Could. Hey, Razza could you could? Yeah, but um, the yeah, other guys are back rowers, so they've got it in the bag. Yeah. But I'm I'm speaking specifically yeah. front rowers. Ooh, yeah, that was that was just beautiful to watch. Oh, it's I was beautiful. Like, yes, I was just sitting there going, big yes, big mozzy. Um, yeah, that was a that was a highlight of the game. Um, uh, he's going to be required in the yeah, next couple man. of weeks. It looks like Fisher Harris is going to uh, miss some time. What for? What is uh, it? A shoulder yeah. injury. Yeah. Okay. Um, people think he got injured in the Regan Campbell Gillard when Reggie went over top of him. I watched him off the no, kickoff. That wasn't it. I think he got licked, or I think he injured it maybe a couple of sets before because when he ran off the kickoff, I just think, sorry, I just think Reg got him because he was injured. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So when he ran off the kickoff, no a disrespect to Reg, but no, still, we still yeah, run still mad. It was a mad carry, mm. Reggie. Like I love it when you're he watching it in it, slow mo yeah. when front rowers get that shit over another front row, yeah. and he goes, "Oots." Yeah, but then, but then you know what Fisher's got? You got me off balance. <laughs> 
Nah, Fish there's will always, be- no, there's always an excuse, mate. Fish you got me when I was off balance. Fish will be going to the ground going, my shoulder's fine. Yeah. Oh, God. I, need a, I need a Rico tomorrow, <laughs> mate. <laughs> he got me at my weakest point. There's he, always. He took a carry off the kickoff a couple of sets before, and I went. He just he, he, he does that. Hey, he does that little bit of a turn, man. Yeah, I know, but it was different, mate. He had, had, had no power in it. And I went, mm, that was a bit soft from Fish. Like I, I and yeah. I and it went, I'd never say that about yeah. Fish. But I went. Ah, he didn't. That wasn't him. Yeah. So I was like a little. I was like Is something up with him. Mm. And then Reggie runs over top of him. Sure enough, he gets taken off. Sure enough, he's got an injury uh, concern. So I reckon he did it a couple of plays earlier. Yeah. I think he did it before that yeah. kickoff. Um, Maybe but it's still, something that he carried into the game as well. But when you show highlights of that in fucking ten years, Reggie's still going to go. Hey, talk to his kids. Do you remember this, bro? Best front, one of the best front rows of all time. <laughs> this is what Check I did this shit you. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check this shit. Oh, I love it. Oh, that was a great battle, man. It was a great battle. Um, Parramatta, Parramatta had every opportunity to win that. Parramatta were great, mate. And this is my this is my uh, again. I, I watched the game the game before. I can understand the ten in the bin for Nikita when he hits um, kicks because he kicks a six foot five, but he hits him in the shoulder. Bro, I, he might go for that. He's going to get two or three weeks, which I agree with. But what I don't agree with, Jerome Luai, and again, this is not a crack at Jerome Luai. This is the way it's officiated on yeah. these halves. Mm. Jerome comes in, it's lazy, it's loose, bang, little lick straight on his face. Simonson's going down. What happens? Penalty on report. Nothing, nothing for Luai. Simonson's gone for the game. Again, not having a crack at Luai, but if it's a half, it's, if it's a center, if it's a fucking winger, they don't officiate the same way that they <laughs> do know. on forwards. It's crazy. It is crazy, mate. It pisses mate. me off. It, mate, I'm a fucking ex-forward and I'm just sitting there going, bro, Nicara nearly broke fucking kick out his head. Like, I'm, I look at the worst case scenario. The intent was there. Like, yeah. mate, mate, the intent, wait, he's already passed the ball. He's set and he could have pulled out. Yeah, because you've got to set yourself He fucking pumped again. him. This is I'm no, this I'm not having a crack at Nikita. I'm saying that Jerome should be. No, I'm just I'm, I'm just let me get to it. It's just like he just went, he banged, he went, yep. hit him. Imagine if he broke um kick out's jaw. Yeah, it could have been worse. Yeah, you know, I look at the worst it case though, because the off. intent is there. Hmm. The intent's not to break his jaw, but if just say if to he fall, if he falls a little bit less, you know, a bit quicker, you're hitting his head. No, if Luai breaks just, Sim- Simonson's jaw. Just quickly, what you're saying, the intent from both Luai and Nikita isn't to They've got intent to hurt them, yeah. but they're not intending they to do to, that. Yeah. But I just say, like, if, if I look at the worst case scenario, a jaw could be easily broken with the power that these guys from, have from got. From both of them. From both of these guys. Yeah. It's a swinging arm and it's a shoulder to the head. Drones so a big 5'8. Like, yeah, like, you know, but they, they can wield some power, man. Mm. So if you, like, bang a hit, just say Simonson has a broken broken jaw. Mm. He doesn't even get sighted. You get, you get nothing. Yeah. Like, he's sweet. He can play next week. Yeah, and Simonson missed the entire game. He was ruled out. Mm. So that rule they need to fix somehow. It's the it's not the rule. It's the the way it's enforced. Interpretation. It's the it's the way it's enforced. Mm. They don't they don't take halves and wingers and centers hitting um, defensive players the same as they do if it's a forward because they think the force is going to be so much more stronger. These outside backs and halves are big now, man. Bro, Jerome Law is about ninety kilos. Like fucking, he had a small. It's not the eighties. It's not Chuck Heron coming off the wing. What do you got there, mate? Oh, you got a text for me. Okay, sweet. It's not Chuk Heron it's coming off the wing. It's 40 minutes. Chuk Heron's not coming off the wing hitting you. Yeah. <laughs> Chuk Halligan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said I needed to see the rotation of the Parramatta team uh, as well. Oh, just quickly, the Simonson injury. Very critical on Brad Arthur on this one. Mm. After watching – Isaac Tungle was obviously fucking really good in that game. But at, uh, at halftime – that defense wasn't working. Tungal was absolutely rinsing yeah. uh, Tuolangi. They should have moved, in my opinion, they should have moved Dill Brown into the centers and either put Bryce Cartwright or Ryan Madison, who's played, they've yeah. both played first yeah. grade at 5'8 before in the past. Bryce. I think that would have fixed defensively and maybe you move Kelma Tuolangi to the spot where Bryce Cartwright comes from. Mm. That was my only yeah. uh, critique that I got on Parramatta. Every, uh, apart from that, everything else was you excellent. think Parramatta lost the game or did Penrith beat him fair and square? Uh, I think. The injury lost them the game. Okay. I think Parramatta are a chance of winning that game if they don't. But still, Penrith classy. Don't mm. take anything away from Penrith. Yeah. Um, Parramatta were up for the game. And I ne- said I needed to see the rotation against yep. uh, a good team, a good pack, and I love it. Yeah. Re- Junior coming off the bench. Uh, Reggie Reggie, and Joe taking the sting out of the game. Junior was a point of difference when he came yeah. on. He got him back into the game. And then that way 
I think that's why they didn't make the change on the edge because they didn't want to move Madison away from the middle. But he, he's probably the guy I would have moved to yeah, six. He to, can play six he easy. Can play so six. can Bryce. Defensively, yeah. better mobility. That's where it is. Yeah. Um, I thought Dill Brown again, excellent. Uh, oh, and then my – Dill was good. The try, which I talked about with um, – I don't like the rule, but if the rule is the rule, uh, just before the Isaac Tungle try – uh, Taylor May or Taruva on the left side gets up and distracts um, Sean Russell. He drops the ball. The Parramatta side struggle to get back online and then they get past pass and score on the tongue on try. So, again, I don't like the rule, but if you're going to have the rule, fucking enforce it. Um, that's, Saturday. That's the, only thing, sorry, that's the only thing that just pisses fans off and like punters and like people like us, journos, like your rule's there. Mm. Just please enforce it. Be consistent. Ashley Klein again. I think Ashley Klein. you shit all the time. I think, I again... Ashley Klein is not the top referee in the. This is the best game. Parramatta versus Penrith, like most pressure. I don't know how he's getting. Give the going. bunker more air time. <laughs> uh, Saturday, 3 30 p.m. Sticky's pumped with Levels Network, Woo! by the way. Loves Levels. The Raiders are up 32. Uh, they, uh, they win back to back. Raiders 32, Tigers mm. 12. Um, Mace, this this win was more impressive for me than the Knights game for a couple of reasons. One, because this is a game where you can go into a little bit complacent, mm. get worried about it. And another reason you get complacent, you go up 12 nil, you're traveling, you're playing a Tigers team that's expected to be shit. Then they go bang, bang, score a couple of tries, and then you go, nah, fuck you, boom, 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 yeah. and kick away again. Um, I thought the Raiders were really impressive. Mm. They look good. A couple of little things with um with the Tigers. That that play on the short side. Right? Unacceptable. That is so unacceptable at any level. You'd yeah. be filthy if that happened in fucking Coogee Dolphins versus Wombats. Mm. No disrespect. You know what I mean? But, like, you know, you don't sit on the sideline that. You don't, you don't sit on the sideline no. for a rest kid. No. I love Bud Sullivan. He's kid. a good kid. I've, I've had a little a bit A lot to, to learn. You've got a lot to learn, man. I still think he's got a, a, a he can be a solid first grader, but yeah. that is the reason you've been in and out of first grade. That you, you, is embarrassing. You, you can understand when you watch video of a team, like, that's something you. It still might well, not be. Well, they called special. No. Ricky knew it. Like they called, they called special because he knows he's obviously been doing it for a couple of or whatever. It's in his game. Trial he sits or even there. Last year. Yeah, there's yeah. there's video on you, mate. Just going to the short side and just sitting there. But that's my point, mate. Normally, you don't pick this up till halfway through the year. This is the first round. Yeah, this is it. their first, a second round, first opportunity. It's just not good enough. They're either doing but it. Sorry, really they're either doing foot, it. Really good. Uh, Great um, footy study, IQ. Study from. But the, from they're either the doing it because it's a it's a bit of a heads up play to see a seven on the on the short side, not a strong defender. Knowing that Savage and knowing that the who, who did the was it the back row was it uh, Sebastian Chris Sebastian stepped Chris off the right, has come, come off his right square up and knowing that Savage can burn anyone yeah so if you're seven little heads up if you're like if you're a seven you sit on the sideline hug the sideline mm. I think they've watched video on it and I think it's uh, again it's unacceptable but yeah. it's really good it's really good uh, video yeah. review uh, from the Raiders they were all right man the the, the Tigers the were Tigers. They, were, they were all right but the the Raiders are a good team. Mm. Don't sleep on the Raiders. You're not worried about the form line as Tigers and Knights? You do like the Raiders? You think – so who the Raiders got coming no, up? No, I like the Raiders. Yeah. I like the Raiders. They've uh, – I'll get the draw up. The 13, them. Smithies goes good. Yep. The back row. The back Ooh, row is, is they got sharp. the Wars in Christchurch this week. Zach Hoskins looks like a beast. He's the early he favourite for buy he, of the year already. He was, he was an animal. Smithy. So you've got Whitehead and, and the and the Horsburgh coming back. Yep. But what do you, obviously, they come back straight into the side. But their depth chart is massive, right? Yeah, yeah. Who do they take? Like, just say if they come back into the side, right? Horsburgh comes back at – does he come back at 13 in front of, like, oh, Smithies? Maybe. Does, does Whitehead come back at 12? He has to. Maybe. No, because Whitehead deserves it. Horsburgh deserves it as well. Oh, yeah. and, and Ricky's very loyal. So who misses out? Hoskins? And Smithies? Someone's goes back – they both go back to the bench probably. And then who probably. misses out on the bench because Salo, uh, Mariota and Bula have been good. This I is why iron sharpens iron all the time. Yep. They know then these guys come back with someone's missing out. Yeah. Starling? No, he's this, not missing out. This he, is a, this You is need an, him. This is an example of when iron sharpen iron works. Yes, it works because Middles these two – working these two, hard. Or do these two go back to re, – no, I no can't way. see him going back to reserve grade, right? right. I can see him coming back – Putting Smithies on the bench and let or Horsper on the bench because he's played a lot of he's played a lot of minutes on the bench. He can play front row. He can play like in the back row anywhere in the forwards. Whitehead, he's their captain. He can play straight on that right side. Hoskins just goes back because he can play center. He can play back row, front row. He can play anywhere. 
What do you do with Mariotta? What about this and one? And Solo. I got and one Solo for you. and Starling. I got one for you. Leave Smithies at lock, put Horsper at the front with Tups, and then bring Papa off the bench like they do with Junior Paulo. He's been outstanding, but Papa's getting older now. He's yeah. in his 14, 15 year. Imagine Papa Lee coming yeah. on the 25 minute mark. There might be something that the Ricky's going to look at, I reckon. It Ooh, could be something I like that. that. You could, you know, you could have, you could put Elliot Whitehead at front row. Mm. You know, like you could put Horsper there. Like, I, I don't know. I think they miss that. I like the way they start games because. The difference is they have Joe Offengawa who goes at you. Yeah. He's got a good leg speed. Well, you don't speed. think Horsburgh can do that in the front row? He doesn't I think play he can. like Joe. Mm. But he can be more of a steadying guy. Like but he's, a go- he's a ball player as well, right? Where Joe just doesn't – he's no nonsense and he just fucking goes at you. Hits hard, knows his job. Horsburgh's got – like he, he likes to ball play a little bit. But that's – I reckon you could – Horsburgh would be similar to having a Reggie. And like – and this is just purely in the parry pack. And then Tarps is going to be Tarps. Like Tarps mm. can ball play. I can – I like that. I like that rotation. Rick, but Papa, whatever they do, yeah. maybe Horsburgh comes off the bench. Who knows? We'll see what happens this week. Be eh? hard, whatever it is. Yeah. I think they're both back this week too. Um, so like a not, Solo. Solo's been mad as well. I'll, we talked about it before. I like the look of this Lockie Galvin kid. He, uh, yeah. yeah, I like that. Again – Looks the, like he hasn't done a weight in his life. Yeah, he's 19 Once, years old. Well, he went to muscles up, gets a couple of pre-seasons. And yeah. um, he was – Got the ball in the second half, man. He was their dude. Mm. He got he the wanted ball. It. I think the Sullivan kid got hooked, didn't he? He did. Put yeah. uh, Caesar Salad on. So Caesar Salad had minute restrictions too. That's why he didn't start to begin okay. with. He's had a ham- hammy problem, and okay. um, I heard that he was on minute restrictions. So I dare say, I think Caesar will suit Galvin a lot better than what Bud Sullivan did. Oh, but mass- massively. You can't have an 18, 19 year old in your halves mm. starting. No. Bud Sullivan would be about 21, 22 now. Oh, was he? Yeah, a bit older. He's been around for a couple of years at the Dragons. Well, who'd they say was 19? So Galvin, Galvin's, Galvin's 19. 19. and Oh, and the young kid Strange is 18. Or yes, 19. 19. So they, yeah, they, were, they yeah. were saying two halves were going against each other. Yep. Yeah, Sull- Sullivan's been around for uh, – yeah, he's 21. So pretty sure the com- communications uh, aren't that good at the Tigers between the halves. Just before we move on to that, Ethan Strange, he, lo- he looks like a long-term Fuck. Raider. Long-term Raider. Um, his defence – Impresses me more than anything. Same. That try was great. Yeah, right. Yeah, like nice. he fucking comes off his left foot and he's got that right palm, all that kind of stuff. He's physical. He looks good. He looks he's a physical. Raider. Yeah, he looks physical. He's a raider. Um, but that tackle right at the end when um, Charlie Staines was running. Yeah, I missed he, this. I didn't and see he this fucking tackle. come at him and he got penalised for a high shot. It was just fucking chest on chest, ragged old him. He out. wants to smoke. Fucking loved it. Everyone was around him, just yeah. like tapping him on the head, going, yeah. fuck yeah, you know what I mean? And you just feel him just growing in confidence and confidence because what we do when you're up, when, when you guys like Big Papa and Tarps and all these older guys, you want your halves to go at it. Like There's a good feeling in this game. Yeah, it's mate. a good feeling. You can see when they're scoring tries, you know, Rups had him, Rups had him like just patting his head like mm. a fucking good kid. Yeah. You know, that's the shit that you love when you're a young kid like that and you get the respect from your boys OGs. the OGs they love you they look after you Rappiner was outstanding as well he's so good that they're, dude's 34 they're gonna play he debuted in 2008 7 7 yeah Fucking I think hell. it was 7 I think I, was deb- I think I was at the Roosters no he played one eight. game at the Tigers it was 8 because oh, yeah. I was at the Roosters yeah. I'm, I'm, I think it might be 7 for a couple of yeah, years yeah yeah I think yeah, he yeah. went seven. I think he did 7 yeah. 7 because he debuted in the, the inaugural season I think that's crazy could be wrong Tell me in the comments, but um, it was either seven or eight, but he's been around for a minute. Went, went away for a couple of years, signs in Canberra as a walk-on, you know, yep. and then That's just right. plays – one of the best players in the comp. He goes – he is their spiritual leader. He, Wherever he – if he fucking plays good, they win. If yeah. he's off, they lose. 2008 it was, mate. Five hey, appearances yeah, for the yeah, Titans. Yeah, and then he comes back him. in 2014. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, he's been rock yeah, solid. I think we talked about this last week. Yeah, we did, well. we did. Um, but yeah, they're going to play. They like the beauty of this t- the Raiders, and there's not much really on the Tigers anyway in that game. Um, is that Raiders have a specific way they're going to play out? They don't hide it, and when they got a fullback like Jordan Rappiner, they're not going to beat you on the outside. They want to come through. I like Xavier Savage. I love Xavier Savage. Happy love for him. Happy X for marks him. the spot, baby. He's that X factor. He got the sticky. You're not part of the team all last year. And now he's back in, and he's hungry. Yeah. You can tell he wants it. He's about it. All right, the Saturday 5.30 game, Cowboys 21, the Knights 20. Um, I wrote down the Cowboys lose this game last year. The Knights realistically should have won and they were very conservative because of the way they – in the fashion they lost against the Raiders. They, it seemed like it was just all about completion rates up there. But they really should have won this game, mate. Because yeah, Cowboys well, gave them multiple opportunities to fucking win the game and they just didn't. It was a weird game, wasn't it? Like uh, it's – the Cowboys just couldn't get it. We spoke about the weather. 
and like it's going to be humid and it's, you know slippery, like similar to the Brisbane mm. game. And I'm like, if any team can handle it, it's going to be the Cowboys. They yeah. train in this shit all the time. Should be more used to it. And I was just like, they're going to be used to it. it. And yep. they just weren't. And then it was a couple of players. I mean, like we, were, we spoke about it before, like with, with Val, a little bit off. The Ford's little. A little bit off. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to bag him that yeah, much. A yeah. little bit off. Their middles were really good. I thought they ran hard. They did all the simple things and then, then they'd fall back with a mistake. They'd get out of yardage and they'd fall back. They just they'd, they'd just get about on the to score momentum. Mistake. Then that would be a mistake, and I'm like, this might be one of those games. Yeah. Val could even it up. He misses the goal. I th- he you was know? nearly my dog of the week, and if he doesn't play in this game, not only do they not win, but they get pumped. Tommy Dearden, yeah. the new skipper. I love what the Cowboys are doing because this is why the Cowboys are my favorite team, or, or why I'm probably high on them, is because the the new co captains like the, mm. they've got these. And Tommy Dearden's about it. Yeah. So not only – he's not a guy who's going to take the role and sit back and go, all right, let's man manage this team. He's got no. Chad there to do that. That's mm. his role. I'm running. Tommy Dearden goes after the I'm fucking I'm running. Game. He punches through the yeah. middles for tries. He's strong, man. I'd love to play with he's Tommy Dearden. He's so strong. I'd when love he comes to play across the other side of the ruck, when he steps off his right, most people will get off balance. He'll spin out of tackles. His hips are always square. Ah, fuck, he can play, man. He's a, he's a gun. The problem for them, like the Broncos, they've got so much talent that they think they can score on every play. Yeah, Tuolungi was outstanding. Yep. But they were trying to say Tuolungi was doing the stuff that Val was doing last week. Val was still trying to do that, but he was just making mistakes. Mm. It was just – just, you just have one of those games where it's just like – It's not happening. Yeah. So then the beauty of that team is other people pick the slack up. Yeah, sweet. Um, I will say that the miss – you know how we've been sort of petitioning for Drinky to be the um, fullback, but like being mm. contention. That miss on Elliot, that's – that's that's the reason he's not in contention yeah, because that that's terrible. A, as much as I love him and he's got that shape out the back, he's got to fix that up because yeah, that could be the one twice, little, that could be the one last little piece where now the second one wasn't his fault on the I don't think it was his fault but that that first one was Adam Elliott played great Adam Elliott was one was of good. his best games two tries uh, again speaking of being critical on drink you got to be I guess we've got to be critical on KP in this one like the game was there to be had I was waiting for him mm. to go all right this is Dalian winner fucking yeah. KP go after the game. Let's get it, and it just sort of just didn't eventuate. Yeah, sometimes it just doesn't happen, man. Like he's just got so much talent, and if other players around him or inside him, if they're not on, it they feels can't like do everything, mate. It feels like they're a bit distracted. At yeah, the moment, but I they? mean, like you know, he's he's running his lines like he was last year on that left side of the ruck. He's getting his shows in, he steps out, and like it's just not happening. Like Brad, him and Bradman Bess are a little bit off. Yeah, that was happening all the time, all all last week. Yeah. You know, and then you had, um, you know, Marju's been off a little bit as well. Do you think they're missing, like I know Kai Pierce paul looks good, but maybe Lachlan Fitzgibbon got to give him a bit more credit. He was really straightening him up on that left. Or is it the yardage plays of Dom Young coming out of yardage and creating that? Because they were always on the front foot. Remember off those – Yeah, those it, two were getting at like 200 metres a game. Oh, oh, quick, like their yardage plays were so good. Yeah. They were always on the front foot and then they were able to play. They're just lacking that a little bit. Just a little bit. teams are amping up on Marzu. And a little bit in the middle too. They need a little bit more cohesion in the middle. Like for, for their setup plays, they need to be a lot more damaging, right? Yeah. For KP to get on that left edge or right edge and, and do what he does. Like with his back rollers, with Frizzell, with KPP. You know, like he, they need to be – it needs to be a little bit of a quick play the ball, a little bit more diversion around the ruck, right? You can't just go one out of the ruck like Leo Thompson or Saifid. He's very one out. Yeah, the, they very, have, very. They don't have good variety. From no, it's not there. variety. There's no variety at all. It's mm. just like you get up there, big boy, and just do your best. Because like, Adam Elliott's not a ball playing lock. No, no, no. So Adam Elliott used to maybe distribute the ball a little bit more. You know, like just like get get the ball a little do you want bit him wider. To do that though, because no, in the past they've had Kurt not, Martin, just, man, but just pass the ball. It's, it's, it's an easy pass. Quick it's, tip on. it's just getting from going straight into the teeth of him, like like Saifidi, and then you're getting it like the C and maybe the format. A little tip on. Yeah, like Nathan little, Brown does? Like a little bit of a tip. It's yep. an easy, low percentage ball, bang, yep. you bang it into him, and then you can go around the other side with the ball playing whatever he's whatever whatever the shape they need to get to get KP the ball in that shape. Yeah. You know, they need to sort it out, but they need to be running more in pairs and in numbers, not one out. You can't go one out these days, man. Yeah. For a, for a settler play, especially when they're over halfway. When they're over halfway, that's where they're the most dangerous. Just a little bit over halfway when they can have those big sh- long strikes at them. And they got it, they got it. And and with Hastings as well, he's off as well. He's going nowhere near the line. He's do, he does game manage well, but he doesn't go anywhere near the line. So that when you're at A and B, when you go on when they when they break it down on that right side of the post and it gets to him and he just like little dummy this, it doesn't fucking do anything. 
This is an example where iron doesn't sharpen iron. The, the headache of the, I think the headache and the distraction of all the halves chat is affecting the Knights. Yeah. Because I think there's uncertainty between the seven, six, and nine options. And yeah. I think it's playing a part and they're and not really, they don't seem cohesive. And therefore, Kalen, I don't think he's getting any rhythm off the back of it. None. He's yeah. getting none. Yeah. Um, the Saturday, all right, let's get to Saturday, 7 30 p.m., Storm 30, Warriors 26. Heartbreaker for the Warriors. We talked about a little bit about this game. All right, let's talk about the try, mate, before anything else. Let's we'll start at the end and get to the <laughs> Easily, easily the best finish to a game. What, six minutes ago, they need two tries? And that diving out, like, Zelazniak knew what was going on. He was going to, he, point. he just didn't know he was going to dive three, four meters out. He was there. He was ready to go and, and go at him when he was in the air, but he just, he, he dipped too late. He di I mean, he dipped too early. He's jumped over him. Oh my god! It's 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 the best finish ever. Underrated take from you straight off the bat. I thought I was going to hit you with that one. <laughs> the fact that Dell does that week in week out, there was no better defender to defend him in that moment. Dell didn't do anything wrong. Nothing. He hit him as clean and as well as you could. Just too early. And it is the greatest uh, regular season finish try. I don't because you can't compare it to a finals or yeah. or going through to the next level of a final. Yeah, well, you talk, if you say that regular season, yeah, it's easy. Regular to season, but best in, try? In, in all context as well. Like yes. they need that was the winning try of twenty seconds ago. Game Crazy. over. Crazy. They saved that try. The Warriors win. That's they're on it. the bus. They're they're on the way home. Going That's fucking it. yay. You can't uh, compare easy. it to a, a no. grand final try or an origin try, but regular season, I think it's right up there. Crazy. Um, Pappy's back, baby. Pappy's back. Those plays are back, mate. Billy Slater used to rock those in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Very hard to defend, right? You know who's the Your middles. Kevin Proctor was nice. Yeah, it? yeah, Kevin Out Proctor. Out in with Kev Cooper Cronk, Kevin Chaney, Proctor. Yeah, Louis Chaney. Yeah. Chaney needs to get the ball a little bit more as a, le as a left side back row. I know he's only new, but like he's damaging and he's about it, mate. He's got that dog in him. But just the plays are very like just the little block play and mm. then out the back, then the early ball, and then you, he gets on the out out ball and then the lead run. It's Katoa fucking, does it in the second half as well. Perfection. Fuck. It's perfection. You like Joe Chan. You message the yeah, group. Yeah, I like Joe it. Chan. He's about it, mate. Yeah. He just needs to find his feet and, you know, like get him more ball because he's a left side back row. You know, he, left side back row for Melbourne usually gets a lot of ball. Mm. Hoffman, Hoffman esque. Yep. You yep. know what I mean? He's not like Hoffman, but like Hoffman used to get about 20 touches a game. So Kenny he, used to get heaps of touches too. Yeah. When he, so um, I think when over. Munster comes back, he'll yeah. be getting a lot of ball. Yeah, I think they'll become. He, and his game, yeah, his game will go like that because Pez, it's not it. You know what I mean? Like he's just. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, yeah, that dude. He's yeah, not, he's, not yet. Not he's yet. Yeah, that dude. Yet, yeah, you yeah. know, he's still got a lot. He's got a, still got a lot to learn. Um, but Munster is that dude. Yeah, their back rowers have have proved like they know how to produce a Kiwi back rower. Oh mate, look at him, Proctor. We went through it on yeah. the weekend. Look, Proctor. They even go from like the ninety nine thing. Oh geez. Oh, you got Tora, Stephen Tora, Tora Nickow, Stephen Kearney, Matty Rua. Yep. Guys, I had to play against. And then I had to go get Kidwell. Then you got Proctor. Um, Sikamanu. Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy Sikamanu, Smith played a bit Jeremy of Smith. Oh man, to Kenny uh, Paul Bromwich. Who Harris, Paul Who Harris, Fuck. Kenny Bromwich, Jesse Bromwich. Like, oh, it's, yeah. just, it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah. Mate, they're impressive, man. They are very impressive. Yeah. Warriors were impressive as well to come back from eighteen six, nearly and pretty much nearly get the win. But that finish is one of the best I've seen for a while. Yeah, definitely the best finish I've ever seen in club club land. Yeah, I agree. You know because I and, agree. You know, and we've and, seen some crackers too. Yeah. Um, the Waz, we, we're not too worried about them. Waz fans, we talked a little bit about you on the ladder prediction. So if you want to, um, so my pick, remember my picks, right? With, yeah. If Egan didn't play, I'm Melbourne. Yeah, that's right. I we, did swap, swap a couple of times in the text messages. Yeah, you, did. <laughs> you <laughs> said, yeah, go the Waz. He was on the Waz to begin with, Waz fans, and then he quickly uh, changed to a Storm Egan, fan. Because Egan, hey, it's on, it's on, it's on the. It's on last week's podcast, but um, yeah, Egan, Egan's a big deal. I thought, but I thought um, Lussick was good. Lussick was all right, man. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I, I think just lost that, just a little bit of class that Egan has. I agree. But that did not cost them the game. It did not cost them a game at all. There were two moments, again, the Waz fans and I, even me watching it, I felt bad for the Warriors. I don't know how Montoya, you can definitively say that Mon – like great effort from Jerome Hughes. There is no way you can definitively take that try away from him and say he did not – Touched like if it had gone up, no try, I would have been happy with it. But the fact that the referee had caught it a try live, you know what cost him? Montoya got trying to go for it a second time. Yeah, I, don't, I think he thought he was short when I think he did score it. Yeah, but the fact that Montoya was trying to continue to yeah. fight for it, I think that's yeah, what cost that's what him. they called. Yeah, um, and then the other one was and Jerome Hughes absolutely killed him by the oh, way, he always easily. kills the Warriors, 
But when he sunk in on, on – the, they made a half little break and he bit in on Jackson Ford, I want black and white on the rule for the obstruction rule, but this was not an example of He got of it. in his way on purpose. He moved on nah, the No, he inside. moved. That's what I'm saying. I don't like that. Yep. If you get – if you – if he impedes you on – just say you're there and yep. I run on your outside shoulder – that's it. Black That's fine. But if I'm running on your outside shoulder and you move, No, you run, he's running. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, whatever. And you just move. Either way. Either way. Like he's just moving in the way. So it's a penalty. It's yeah. a smart fucking play. Yeah. It's a smart heads up play in those moments like that where if you can do that, well, you just play into the rules. But come on, refs. You need to understand if whatever you just go off the line that the, the lead runner's going at, yeah. when they do replay it. Say, well, he's running this way yes. and then you moved yourself in front of him so he's on your inside shoulder or outside shoulder, whatever it is. So it's your fault. They need a, they need a, a guy with rugby league experience to, and they've been pretty good at it. Some get it better than others, but someone has to be in the bunker and go, that's not fucking but good. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? So when they do go into the video replay, mm. where's he? Where's the line runner running and where is Jerome Hughes? Yeah. And then does Jerome Hughes move his feet? At all yep. to get in the way? Yes, he does. He does. Try, try, or it was, it was, it, or no try. Whatever it is. No, there wasn't an opportunity to, to score a try because they pulled it up so early. Or did it score? A it scored. They, they, they scored score on it. Away. Yeah, and then they went back to that play. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah, what but, I'm saying. It's 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 costing tries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was um, a try. Like, it was a try, but they went back to it and they go, well, you you uh, impeded Jerome Hughes. Jerome Hughes knew exactly what he's doing. Great play it, from you. Yeah. But if you go back, video refs bunker, listen to what we're saying. Go and see what these defenders are doing. Yeah. If they're moving in front of that, in front of the 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 attacker, let it play. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the first game of Sunday, 4 p.m. Seagulls defeat the Roosters, 21 to 14. Um, we talked a little bit. You you love the um, Manly Seagulls. You think they're yeah. going to be all right this year? Yeah. I mentioned it before on the preview. I'm undefeated when attending Manly games since returning to right. the that's country. Why I, that's five why I five. Manly. Manly. Uh, shout out, uh, thanks to Manly for inviting me for the tickets. Got free drinks, food, nice little uh, good time. Japanese bar there. Good was time. nice. Yeah, got yeah. looked after. Hung out with the Hello Sports boys. You know, they uh, oh, love, a, love a, 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 a famous Manly victory. Maybe an ambassador role for me moving forward because we just don't lose when I turn up. Um, <laughs> Paseca was your dog of the week. My LOI man. was uh, good as well. But mm. this team is so much better, mate, when Tommy Turbo is at the back. Yeah. And, and he, ain't, he ain't doing shit from 2021 yet, but he's involved. His yeah. involvements are massive. He's out the back. He's doing – he's around the ruck. He's just a big body. He gets a dummy half. He attacks wherever he wants to attack. It's going to happen. Mm. It's going to happen. The more the more more runs in his legs, the more meterage, all that kind of stuff, then he's going to be doing some fantastic shit, man. He's. Uh, I'm just happy that he's back. He looks happy. Manly look happy. They go as far as Turbo. I was sitting next to Beaver and because Beaver was there. He Beaver. goes around and does all the corporate stuff. Beaver. He's getting paid to get <laughs> cash. And uh, we were both saying he's still probably a gear away, yeah. but that he's just going to warm into it and uh, he's looking good. Luke Brooks again. You know the beauty By of the year. Oh, he's nice. He's going to be up there. He's nice. And you know what? It gives him a threat on both sides because he's got Kohler on the left mm. and Ola Kuatu on the right. Um, they've, got, they've got threats all over the park now. It looks dangerous, man. The whole team looks dangerous. Whenever and and you know what I love about them, they're having a crack at you early. Mm. They're playing football. Yeah. If you want to, hey, if you want to be, if you want, if you you want your winger to be on the numbers line coming out of yardage, guess where we're going? Yeah, we're having a crack. We've got a col kid called Cola who can run a ten flat, mm. not ten flat, whatever, ten five, whatever. He can run tens, so he's going to smoke Sub you. Might. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so, like so, you better check manly. And guess what happens then? If you're if you spread. That means that means there's bigger gaps in the middle. Yeah. Right. So that's what they're trying to Jakey, do. Short yeah. Passes, so you're going to get turbo. Jakey. You're going to have like Paseca getting a little bit more footwork. Alloy, uh, Olakwatu could go the other way. So if you do spread your defensive line out all the way to your wingers, which they don't traditionally do, you're always in between the numbers in defence. Yeah. You're going to have to account for that now because they're going to score some long long range tries. If you did, if they didn't have Dom Young. On that on on the winger there, it's try time to Tommy Chilau. You know the best part is like DCE and Jakey haven't even had to do too much in the no. first couple of rounds as well. Uh, what about the Roosters, mate? We'll we'll finish up with this game. Actually, yeah. we'll wrap it up and we'll do the Dolphins and Dragons in the preview. Um, just a quick uh, wrap up on them, and we talked about uh, Hamase Tabuai being our dog of the week. Um, Roosters look a bit clunky again. They looked a little bit how they did last year, but yeah. do you think it was more Manly forcing them or Roosters, are you worried about them in any way? Manly forced it 
because because of their first set, mm. they just went at him. They go, we're going to come at you. Alloy, a bang, back fence, Paseca, back fence, another hit up. I think Olakuatu. Then they went wide. Yeah. And they, 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 next minute they're down on your twenty. Mm. It was unbelievable. Then they're on the back foot ever since. I wouldn't have started um, Ty, Terrell May. I would have mm. started Hargraves. Uh, Hargraves was about it when he came on. Yeah, but I'm just saying you need to start him against those guys. Mm. You know, Terrell you like May's the OGs, still, yeah, big yeah, games. yeah, big games like that. You need him. You yeah. need his presence in the middle. You know, you don't need him coming on after 25 minutes, 30 minutes. You know, Lindsey Collins and him need to set the tone. Terrell May is still a young kid. He's played 14 games. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh, if I'm going to play a big game like that, I'm starting Hargraves, and he always goes hard against Manly because he's a fucking Manly. Man, he's a, he played his first grade game for man, his first nine games of his career, Manly, before yeah. the Roosters got him. So it's a personal thing for him. Yeah, he yeah, always goes true. hard. So you just he always, does. He loves. You always manly. remember that going. Why the fuck did you let me go? Well, Why'd the, you let me go? At the game, I was watching it live. Roosters outside backs could be the, the tallest of all time. So oh, they are. Dom Young, six foot five. Swali, six, six, six foot mate, five. He's big. Six foot six. Joey Manu's the shortest, six yeah. foot two. And then you got Toops as well. They'll force and Joey Manu the ball, won't they? Yeah, too Again, much. Too much ball like yep. they did the two of Arsa last week. Yep, like that's exactly just, what we said, And right? it's, too, it's too much. You give him the ball like you gave Cole the ball. Yeah. When there's spaces. You don't just get it. You don't get the ball from the middle of the field, go pass, pass. Here. It's not under 12s with Joey. Yep. He, needs, he, needs to, he needs to create his own stuff. Give him early ball from the other side of the post. Then a long shift to him or short sides, all that kind of stuff. That's how you get the best out of Joey Moni. You can't yeah. just give him ball like that because defences are all over him. You know they know what? he's got a right foot. They know he's got it in the way. Like you've got to stop him first. I know that. But defences are so good and they game plan for Joey. Because Manly were playing footy the way that they were, it's like the Roosters wanted to do the same. Where mm. they, the Roosters do their best work when they play through the middle and then have Joey later. Yes. I thought, you know, Kiri and Sam Walker, they were yeah. off, man. They are off a bit. Brandon, uh, Brandon Smith, they weren't, they weren't gelling. They go as far as those three. You can have the best outside backs, front rowers, but if you're nine, seven, and six, I ain't aren't, aren't cool. doing it. Like I thought, Teddy, I thought Teddy was great. I think you know, but those other guys, they need to be on the same page. Mm. If they can do that, then you see why Wong's will be running better lines. You know, Nat Butcher coming off. Like you know, Tupin, uh, Tupanua doing doing his thing, Lindsay Collins doing his thing. Like everything will fall into order, but they need to get that right. Yep. All right. Uh, last game is the Dolphins versus Dragons. We'll uh, do, do that in the preview. We've run out a little minutes. bit of time, um, but we'll be back on Thursday so we can attack that game. And plus, it's thirty-eight nil. So um, yeah. we can chat. We can chat briefly. St. About George it in sucked. The preview. Dolphins killed him. That's um, the review. Yep. We'll see you on Thursday.